Being true to who you are makes all your dreams possible. Pee -pee. Pee -pee. Ah! Go away. This. Not you guys. Don't worry about it. <laughs> hello, hello! Ow! Please be gentle. Don't throw stuff at me. <clears throat> good day, good morning. I'm calling Miku, yeah. I have a hot scene named Miku on speed dial. How is everybody doing? I am eating some breakfast right now. I'm eating some toast. I'm eating some toast with peanut butter. Toast? Ew! Food people be gone. <laughs> toast with a tea, toast. Don't Schneider behavior. Oh, you can't say that. No. <laughs> Yo. But yeah, sounds like something that would be in like iCarly. It's not playing. Or did it play? Huh? Morty. 
Smith. The Morton's plate. I didn't hear the... There he is. Oh. Bitch, I can't see. Bitch, okay, I they're definitely working. Bitch, I can't fucking see. If I go to the sound alert dashboard in the activity feed, it doesn't even show the... Yeah, it's it skips it's skipping over stuff. Yes. Yeah. Why is that? I'll play it again. Oh, thank you. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Yuri a hot, oh, Yuri a cheer, Yuri a hype, Yuri a high. <laughs> the timing. <laughs> Yes. <clears throat> yeah, the website is just a bit broken sometimes. <laughs> Lyra, thank you so much for the 22 months. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate the continued support. Let's fucking go. Oh, you guys, it's morning. Well, it wasn't morning anymore. My sleep schedule is still fucked. I slept so badly. <laughs> this morning. Uh... Like, I, I've been locking my cat out of the room, right? So that I could sleep. But he has just been, like, scratching and yelling at the door. So, uh... I don't know. I just kept it close and at some point he would stop. So I was like, well, okay. <clears throat> I guess it kind of works. And I stepped out. Stepped out of my room. And it smelled like shit. And then I saw that the bathroom was closed, which is also the room that Corin's litter box is in. So it was like, oh shit. Literally. He shit somewhere else. <laughs> so I was like, and he was like yelling at me, meow, 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 like when I stepped out. <laughs> so I went around looking. It's like, okay, where did you do the deep, bro? And I found it, and it was like, just, it was in an empty Amazon box. <laughs> like, he was still... He still did it in a box. <laughs> like, he didn't want to do it anywhere else. And like, it's like, oh, I really, I just really need to go, but I can't. So he did it in a box. <laughs> then he just tried to hold it as long as possible until he couldn't. <laughs> Did you ship it back to Amazon? Yes. Straight up return the package. I oh, know, it felt bad for him. I, um... I went on a walk last night. It was like around 11 p.m. or something. Ow. And, um... Corn walked into someone's backyard. Since it was already late, those people were probably already asleep. And I was like, oh, Corn, come back! Come back! And he wasn't coming back. Motherfucker. <laughs> he has this little, little GPS color so I could see where he was. And he had a little bell so I could hear him so I knew where he was there. It has a little light on it too. But yeah, I, I went, to, I went uh, to do a little bit of trespassing so that I could uh, get him back inside. <laughs> Let me see, like, I have a photo of him from a distance. Like, he is the blue dot, because that's his color that lights up. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's like I just didn't want to go back there I didn't want to go into someone's yard But I just went And he wasn't like Being disobedient or something Like he let me pick him up <laughs> Once I was there he was just exploring, but, you know, I prefer if he doesn't do that on other people's property. But, you know, it's a cat. Like, they don't know what other people's property is. Unless it's marked by another cat. <clears throat> I 
I just finished work, heading home. Take care, daddy. Hi, Yuri, my carpenters have finally settled down and I can return to the gen hours and watch your stream again. <laughs> oh my god, wait, what? Well, I appreciate you being here. Anyway, yeah, those are my uh, cat adventures. He has been uh, like I I try I, I was throwing away my my trash this morning, so I, I put it inside of the Amazon box with the shit. <laughs> I, I walked to the door and he was just so excited. He's like, oh, you were gonna come outside? He's like, no, I picked him up and I just locked him back in. No. I made a mistake with letting him outside because he just loves it so much. And now he's constantly begging me. Uh... But it did, uh, um... I guess it's good for him a little. I could just let him outside and he's like sniffing all this stuff for a couple of minutes and then it's like, okay, we're going back in, bro. Does he meow at you to go outside? Yes, he will. Like, because if I want to go to the kitchen or anything, I have to pass by the front door. Because the stairs from the from the basement. That was kinda loud. The stairs from the basement goes past like the front door. And every time it's just I walk outside, it's like, oh, we're going, we're going outside, yes. It's like no, the stairs from Yuria's cave. I have all my windows open right now. I'm kind of cold, but I want to need to get the freaking shit smell out of here. <laughs> I let my cat out once. He was terrified, and now every time I go, he tries to sneak out too. It's it. Uh, well, my cat was an outdoor cat back home, but I don't feel safe letting him outside here in Canada because of the wildlife. But he obviously doesn't understand that. He just He's just like, why can't I go outside anymore? So he only goes outside under supervision. And I assume it's mostly okay, especially during the day. But, you know, still, just in case. Like, I I don't want to risk it. <laughs> of course. The woos are strong. No, I'm very afraid of coyotes, honestly. And I got like a whiff of the smell. Okay, uh, I walked him on a leash, but I kept seeing a lot of unleashed dogs in my neighborhood, so I stopped. Oh, that's fucked up too. I absolutely despise it when owners don't leash their dogs. I really, really like dogs. Uh, but you know, you don't know how they might respond to other people still. So when I when a dog runs up to me all excited, like I'm I'm happy with it. But you should just shouldn't let them loose. Cause not all of them are like that. Or some people think that they have a really well raised dog, but they're not and they're bite people. Or how they react to other dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or how a leash dog might react to, to them, you know? Like so many variables. You should only do that at actual places where it's allowed, like a dog park. In my case, when I saw an unleashed dog once and got a closer look at them, I was like, that's not a dog. Was it like coyote? <laughs> or even a wolf? I saw a video, it was just a couple of days ago or last week, where they uh, saved a wolf out of freezing water. But the, the wolf was so... Obviously, it was so cold and shocked that it kind of acted like a dog because it, it was just so chill. Like, they put it in the back of the car and everything and took it to a vet. It's like, uh, this is a wolf. <laughs> it was so shocked. 
In Australia, uh, in Australia, house pets cats probably need to cope with fox or big snake. Oh, oh, hell no. So, cats are mostly... Honestly, like a nuisance to the wildlife because they hunt birds, right? Back home, back in Alorus, Corin would sometimes find entire fucking nests and bring each bird over and over. It's like, I got you, I got you, Snack. I'm getting more, I'll be right back. And he would pick up the other fucking birds. That's when I got him a, a bell on his collar. Especially around spring, right? Like around this time of year when it's getting slightly warm. You're getting a lot of uh, eggs that are hatching. How many birds do you want? At least like... the. He, he's good at hunting, I guess. Sometimes a, my, a mouse, too. We would find mice at our doorstep. Sometimes they'd be slightly alive still. And I just feel really bad. <laughs> like, he wouldn't eat them. He would just bring them over the house. Here you go. I got you, I got you a gift. Oh, thank you. And then... I would throw it away when they when he was out of sight. <gasps> I got you a meal. Cook them. Exactly. They mean well. And you could say it's their instinct at everything, but obviously, we like cats. Sh cats do not belong. Outside still, like that's not their habitat. <laughs> so I very much understand the criticism. But I chose to ignore it. <laughs> Cause corn just loves being outside. <laughs> Corin, the feline son of Red Panama, please enjoy this mouse. Exactly. I've read that cats do that because they think you aren't eating. Yeah, they... It's either they bring it to you as like a gift or they think you're a shitty hunter or something. So they hunt for you. And I really... I, I really wanted him to be an indoor cat. I remember when I... Because uh, when I... Adopted him. I lived in a small part apartment that was next to a busy road. So I obviously couldn't let him outside. I would just straight up... I would leash him, pick him up, and then I would walk him to the park. I would walk with him in my arms to the park. And he would be walking around there on a leash. And then I moved. And I have a... Uh, uh, I have a house member that smokes. Which is disgusting. And they smoke, like, usually in the doorway. Which means that the fucking door is open. And Corin escaped a couple of times. And ever since then, I just kind of had to... Commit to him being outside. <laughs> But I really didn't want it. <laughs> Disgusting! This Rip Pan is not a good hunter, let me show her. Uh, pretty much. And I got, I got him like the GPS color and everything so he would be able to go outside and I would, could take him to places and if he ever got loose that I would still be able to track him down. <laughs> My friend's cat chased down and attacked a fox. It was wild. Cats kill for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They... Um... Cats are fucking evil in that way. As in, they don't... They don't hunt and just kill it to... To eat. Especially if they are well fed already. They just kind of like to watch them suffer. To like run around and like poke them and stuff. It's like playing, right? 
they do that not just with cat toys. They also do that with actual live animals that they are hunting. Get a color cam. Have to get a GoPro attached to his chest. It's probably so heavy. <laughs> but I do wonder what, what he does occasionally. See his adventures with his girlfriend. There was a cat aboard a ship that made an entire species of bird extinct when they stopped at an uncharted island. What the fuck? That's next level. I know that they would have cats on ships because of like mice and stuff. They would be an integral part to the crew. My sister used to live on a farm. And she uh, had a cat. And the cat would, uh... Not just catch mice, but he would also catch... Bunnies and stuff. Like wild ones? <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> they make color cams? What the fuck? Color... Cam. Have you seen a video of a stray where the floors is covered by farm rats? What the fuck? A cat was that cool? Yeah, that, that... Oh, I see! Oh, maybe I'll get one. Free USA shipping. Wow. Oh, it looks so cute. It's like a... Th it's a really tiny camera. It's $90, fuck. Amazon. <laughs> Color camera. Oh yeah, also have like... These are probably like worse quality. I like the ones that you can attach. Because he's already wearing a color, of course. Hmm, maybe that is the best one. Mm -mm -mm. One has a top reviews from Canada. Five stars, good. And then the text is just spying. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's also what you can do with this small camera. <laughs> Many of them don't have reviews. They look like you know, like AliExpress stuff. I just I just need to I need a sample of the fucking quality. One star, don't waste your money. Camera only points down. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Mr. Kidders. Well, they sell one here. Color cam. Color cam for cats. Let's see how much it is. Add to cart. Please select some product. Oh, I can pick a color. Uh... Red? <laughs> Yellow for corn? I guess I just need it to be visible. That's all that matters. Okay, how much... $20 shipping. Sounds about right. I'll think about it. <laughs> I'll think about it. 
<laughs> I want to see some footage. I wouldn't be worried about cats hunting birds in the city. They're all fake anyway. That's what I was saying. It's like they're all government drones anyway. So please take them down. Yeah, I want to do my re. I, I want to do my research on like a good one first for a camera. Uh, what was the channel, Mr. Kidders? Oh yeah, I see he has a camera. Uh, th this looks like the one that they were selling on Amazon. Imagine your cat has a double life and has a wife and kids. The more likely option is that they... <laughs> They are let in by other people, and they get fed by others. I've seen people arguing, it's like, oh, well, if a hungry cat comes at my door, I'm gonna feed it. It's like, oh, please do not, because maybe they have allergies or they have diet food. I don't know. And then... Or they will get fat. Because <laughs> they're getting food everywhere. They'll get fat. This channel. Over three hours. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the five hundred bits. <laughs> Oh, I like this. It's so cute, though. <laughs> he dig. He's gonna take a fucking shit. <laughs> the cat's wondering where all the cat noises are coming from. Damn. It's it's pooping. <laughs> they cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. Maybe I should leave him outside. If I show this to my cat, he's just gonna be jealous. Like, okay, why is that cat allowed and not me? I think they can just jump out. There's another one. I want to see the shorts, because those are the highlights. 
Round one. Fight. <laughs> Okay. Let me finish my peanut butter toast. They're not fighting, they're playing. It's so cute. <clears throat> and I bought this sourdough bread, but it's kind of ash. <laughs> if I play this, I bet I can get my cat to come running. Turning up the volume. Okay, maybe not. Maybe he's asleep. Oh, no, there he is! <laughs> hey, Colleen! There he is! Hey, Colleen! Where's the kitty queen? <laughs> Do you guys hear him? He's like, Hey, Bunny. Hey, <laughs> I summoned you. I summoned you. Yeah, yeah, you always respond to meowing. You also respond to kittens. You always start... You, he's always worried about kittens. Okay, he's leaving. It's like... The meowing stopped. <laughs> he meows so much though. I, I'm not sure if my cat meows that much. <laughs> he turned around. Yummy. Why are you walking through it? <coughs> he hears it. He keeps looking around. Just 
It summons him, but he doesn't really meow back. It's like, oh. I'm leaving again. <laughs> okay, so what is the camera that he uses? Insta360 Go 3? World's smallest action camera. <laughs> okay, bye. Oh my god, it's $500. <laughs> Yo, no way. <laughs> Hola, camera. This is probably that's the same camera, I think. Gonzo. He never brought home anything except trash. He really feels the need to bring us stuff. And me being a documentary filmmaker, I ended up making a tiny little spy camera just to see what he's up to. He brings lots of little scraps of plastic, a full pot of flowers that had dried up. <laughs> Give. There were some days where he'd come back with like 10 trash gifts and it'd just rah, every few minutes you're trying to get work done. Get there. Would you rather get trash or dead birds? A trash, I guess. <laughs> He's brought home hundreds of trash gifts now by this point. Color camera and farm cat. Yeah, these are all like this. It's like the same camera that they all use. Like that really small. Yep. I think it's all the Insta goal. So many. The little steppies are just so cute. Oh, so that's like his thing. It puts like cameras on. It's just farm farm channel. Barn cats a day in a life. Why my barn cat can't get shocked by the electric? This is such a cool photo. Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, if I search for best color camera, I will probably just find that Insta360 one cat color camera. But maybe I will get that cheaper one. Mr. Pet Cam. Due to high demand. How much does this one cost? Oh, this one's cheaper. This one's seventy dollars. I mean, equality isn't going to be great either way. It's just so you can get an idea of it, right? Yeah, this quality looks okay. Yeah, 
Your YouTube algorithm is so kind. What do you mean? <laughs> this is the content that we've been watching. <laughs> There's a cat live stream. Cat bath time. Lots of game music. And a guy eating nothing but IKEA meatballs for three days. Only three, huh? When you think of Ikea, you might be normal and think of the affordable home furniture they sell in their stores. Or you might be insane like me and think of their meatballs. And that's the only thing I'm going to be eating for the next three days. Meatballs from a damn furniture store. At the end of the video, I'll let you know how many meatballs I ate and how it fares to my other eating challenges I've done this year. I heard there's a lot of wood in there, but rest assured, I'm just here for the balls. <laughs> So we actually don't have an Ikea store up in Cleveland. In fact, the closest store to me is in Columbus where my girlfriend lives. So I traveled down there for day one. Bro, this place has its own fucking like street name. And prepared myself for a three day span of ball deleting. Now I do have to preface, I've never been to an Ikea down store in before. Ohio. And actually, I'm the first person Swag to go there in Ohio. And no furniture. I was incredibly phased when I saw the store for the first time. That store is a thick boy. I walked up the escalator to get to the food court. I decided to get 16 meatballs for my first meal. Not really sure if that was too many or too few, but we're gonna find out. And when I told the cafeteria man that I just wanted the meatballs and not the entire meal, <laughs> he looked at me like I had 27 nipples. And I haven't been to five. Ikea in a while. I love Ikea. For the next three days, and it turns out Ikea meatballs are delicious. The gravy on top was really good too. I decided hot dogs to are made of hot. Yeah, but the hot dogs are only 50 cents. Being. It's no wonder Ikea stands for I could eat a meatball. And again, I'm just here for the meatballs. And if you want one of these shirts, you can I get love them. I love me some 50 cents hot dogs. Only for the next two weeks. So if you can see this, they're still available. So get yourself a shirt. Or don't. This might be my easiest challenge yet. Hi, it's I would also I, I every time I go to every time I go to a kiosk, like I go to a store to like buy stuff, right? And afterwards, get a hot dog. Uh, this will it's not closer be to a dollar. Easy they are i think one euro normally, but if you are an IKEA family member, then you get them for fifty cents. Easiest video. By and you can four. just sign okay, up for free. Video. I also was very fond on how clean their bathrooms are in there, but that also might change by the time I'm done with them. And as I was trying to exit, I found something kind of weird about IKEA. But they I wouldn't be surprised if they're like 120 or something now, more expensive. And as a result, I got lost. It was like I was in a maze, only instead of It's been a while fields, since I, I went there. <laughs> cheap Swedish furniture. I was so lost and freaked out, I had to ask an IKEA employee where I could exit. And he verbatim told me, "The exit's literally right in front of you, you dumb idiot." Okay, he didn't a Okay, he didn't actually say that so i vowed to never get lost in there again to avoid an embarrassing moment like that from now on i was going to be eating more balls than nancy Reagan I'm still eating my Global toast office. it's been like an hour ah! so to combat all that i took a long walk and as always my goal is to walk 10 to 15 miles each day despite columbus having How absolutely terrible weather this week i went back to the furniture store for my second meatball meal of the day my goal for this meal is to not get lost if i don't get miles lost, it's a win i'm gonna try to learn a little swedish this week as well the front entrance says hey, each day that's a lot that's a lot of walking damn hey 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 means hey 10 to 20 just miles hey. i got 16 meatballs again in this drink called lingonberry what the f is a lingonberry also i'm not very good at pouring drinks they even gave me a cool little swedish flag with this meal and i must say these meatballs might be swedish but this sure is a sweet dish <laughs> and before i left i had to do one more thing what what was I supposed to do before I left again? I forgot. My goal for this meal is to not get lost. Oh yeah, I wasn't supposed to get lost. I got lost again. And That's even still worse, grungy. the same IKEA so, employee from before saw me again, so I'm definitely getting the police called on me this week. I then got a couple beers with my girlfriend, Kelsey, and I paid for them because she has to share a toilet with me for the next three days. Kelsey <laughs> decided to join me for my last meal of the day. She didn't get any meatballs like a normal person because it's a furniture store. I'm literally eating meatballs from a furniture store. That's when I got really concerned because it didn't really look like I mean, they they're kind of known for it, right? My final meal. But then I looked again and it turns out I just can't count because there was enough meatballs. In fact, I got 24 meatballs this time instead. I know I have a problem, Ugh. but you are enabling. Still right want to try their cake? Hey, really? What? Of your balls? Is that known to be good? That's when Kelsey learned how many total meatballs I've eaten so far today. 16 plus 16, 32, 24. I've had 56 meatballs today. 56 meatballs today. 
<laughs> she then challenged me to eat 200 total meatballs in this three-day span, meaning you know, for the next six try, meals, I enough. had to consume 24 meatballs per meal. Do you think I should go for 200? Yeah, I think that should be your goal. Small feat for a regular moron, but I'm a professional dumbass. I get really full and exhausted, so it was time to go home and rest before another day of inhaling Swedish people's I don't know, meat. I just really I like walking two, around Ikea. I was actually feeling pretty good. In fact, <laughs> a little too good. I'm not naive. I've done a lot of these eating challenges so far But I also year. really like decorating, so... <laughs> I feel like a piece of shit. So we'll see what happens the rest of the day. I went for a walk in terrible weather before heading to Get go yourself Ikea some saying, inspiration. Hey, the front entrance again. I get so it happy. It's with Fryser. Yeah, yeah. Entrance. At the However, beginning, he like told them, he's like, I, I don't want it with anything else. Just the meatballs, not the meal. <laughs> That would be the happiest I'd be this morning because upon reaching the food court, I had noticed the meatballs were not out yet. Am I the only psychopath that's just here from the meatballs? Merch link in description. The cafeteria Ikea surprisingly cozy. I mean, that's, that's how I rope you in, minutes. right? Like, Ikea is like a day trip. It's not, it, like it's not just going to the store. It's, it's an activity. Do you know about the Ikea SCP? I do, I do. Like 13 hours. <laughs> What was I going to do in 13 minutes? And that's when I looked outside and saw some other balls I could play with in the meantime. Top Golf was right next door to IKEA and it really seemed like a great way to pass the time. But What's the SCP? It's like that, that you're stuck in IKEA and, and there's like time. on the bright the side though being really bad at golf. We're mannequins employees try to kill you at hungry. night. So maybe it would be easier Like during the day during the daytime or something it's a normal IKEA and then at nighttime it becomes fucked up. Dude, I f***ing suck at golf. As I entered the Ikea, I saw a sign that said Valcom in. I have to look this one up too. Valcom, uh, Valcom in? Sounds like welcome in. And I, that's actually what it means. It means welcome in. I went back to the food court and the meatballs were ready. Hallelujah. I got this sparkling pear drink. And it sounds really like a chill has already. My 24 furniture store meatballs. Golf balls, not so much. Man, yesterday I saw some, some another VTuber put on their schedule. Yo, we're playing the Shinkansen game, the, the chill has art game. And... Definitely, especially after playing those games uh, the, that I played like two days ago and the one last week with the shopping list and the weird, the weird game one with the, the guy in the coat. And that those games are free and they are more fun and better quality than Chilla's art. I'm just... Pisses me off. VTubers, I beg of thee, play good games. <laughs> or play better. Play better horror games. <laughs> there is more out there than Chilla's art. <laughs> I have luck with nowadays. I put my tray away and I didn't get lost while exiting for the first time. I might not succeed on the show. Are you smarter it's streamer than a grader, But this was a win for me. Tonight. Yeah, but still, yeah, like but even those games, they are scarier than freaking all the other ones. It's just Chill's Chill's art is a household name, right? Just I'd say pretty much a household name. Like um, what's the guy? The guy the guy who makes all those eighties. Games like the, some like the Nun Massacre and stuff. Permits family for corpos. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's very much a thing. But indies play them because they see like Hollow Life and stuff play them. I'm assuming. The Blum House of Games. <laughs> you gotta spread the word. I once made. Didn't I once made a tw a, a Papa Kimbo? That's what that's what it was. Yeah, thank you. Papa Combo is also not that good, but I do think they make better games than Chill's art. But I, I just don't really like that kind of horror with loud noises. Christmas Massacre was pretty funny. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that popping up now? <laughs> okay, thank you. I got to the car. I kind of had an epiphany on my thoughts from this morning. I, I was like, wait, what? Why is the right screen now, changing? I oh. The <laughs> once. I decided to go on a six-mile walk to the Columbus neighborhood German village. I should I should remove ad block to be honest because I also have U block installed. <laughs> 
back to Ikea in the afternoon. The walk first started off with a ton of hail, but by the end of it, it was perfectly sunny, or at least it would have been if I finished my walk. And you're probably thinking you didn't finish your you walk. You have growth, I just never about. removed the, How the you get home? I just got done alter saying I was nervous about not going to the bathroom so far. And it's because this is not my main browser. So I only use it for YouTube, really. They sell all your info. Oh, yeah. So I only use it for YouTube. <laughs> Just say to watch stuff on stream. The meatballs hit my digestive system like an FBI raid, and I was about to donate my underpants to the local. She doesn't want her history to accidentally leak. Exactly. So I decided to put another <laughs> man's life at risk and order an Uber back home. But then, after what seemed like forever, I finally got back, walked up the stairs, and. Yeah, I didn't make it. That's when I shit my pants. And probably all 80 what meatballs I've eaten so far left me, to be honest with you. I also had another problem on my hands, or in a plastic baggie. Uh, let's just say my underwear was compromised and Kelsey was coming home soon. In the back of my truck bed right now is my soiled underpants. Ew. I didn't want to pull them out inside because that would be disgusting. So I now have to find a dumpster where I can dispose of it. So I had to find a random garbage can on some <laughs> business property and dispose of it there. There's probably nothing more humbling than throwing out a pair of underwear, ladies and gentlemen. I went back to Ikea and said, hey, to the front entrance. The only thing that wouldn't probably judge hey. me right now. Stockholm is the capital of Sweden and I was getting Stockholm syndrome from being back at the same place that caused me so much pain. Well, it's mostly me doing it. It's not their fault. I got this lemon soda drink that tasted really good. And I know I just complained about having meatballs again, but they were really good. And I clearly didn't learn from my lessons before because <laughs> they're still good. Of them again because how else am I going to accomplish it looks like shit when you when you're putting it in your mouth in and it comes out like shit. It does wear on your body to eat furniture style meatballs. After consuming my 104th meatball so far, I decided I had to take a nap. And if you know me, I hate taking naps. I actually love taking naps but that doesn't make a good plot so to wake myself up from the food coma i went on a walk with kelsey and we love naps but we know that they're not good see that garbage can at over the there? same time <laughs> yeah that's, yeah so i threw my underwear out it's literally right there <laughs> no. that night my friend mac and his brother came down to see youtuber legend coyote peterson and get drinks and they gave me the invite as well these guys came up and recognized me for my previous eating videos which goes to show binge eating might have benefits i guess we ended up going to coyote's presentation at ohio state if you don't know he makes youtube videos where he purposely lets dangerous insects bite him and that's the only thing that's dumber than what i'm doing right now i have the two dumbest people i know in the same room <laughs> hey one of those is me probably yeah it is <laughs> i lost track of time and i had to haul back to ikea before they closed for the rest of the night ikea's food honestly court seems fun to do these kind of challenges there is a real chance there might not be meatballs there honestly would be okay with that I'm not that give me, hungry. Give right me one now. of these said, challenges, hey, but Swedish with food ordering and instead. Where I made I'll it do my it. new objective to somehow sit on those chairs by tomorrow. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I did not do that. Fortunately, IKEA had plenty of meatballs by the time I got there. So or actually I something I could like buy, right. like Wrong. eating only smiley because I'm a baby uh, boy. I smiley potatoes every day for a week. Because it turns out there really is such a thing as having too many balls in your mouth. But I was still on track for the real objective here this entire time, which was to eat IKEA meatballs for three days and nothing else. Honestly, might need one of these the way I've been shitting my pants recently. I went back to Kelsey's and watched the Cavs play with a ball and oh my goodness, can I not enjoy anything that has a Or maybe ball I should do it, I should do it with right dino now, nuggies. Yeah, hell yeah, meatballs. only eating dino That's nuggies so for a week. Up. After two <laughs> days, I had consumed 112 meatballs, the equivalent of eating 5.4 pounds of meat. I woke up on my final day of the challenge and went on a walk in only downtown fries. Columbus. Hey again, front entrance. The escalator was broken, mm. which is kind of a weird omen, but I'm also the one strictly eating Eating meatballs at a furniture store. The days of eating twenty kind of meatballs fries, were far behind me. I could only stomach sixteen this time. Even that was questionable. I had another lingonberry drink with my meatballs, and to my surprise, I really enjoyed this meal. I really didn't think I would enjoy this meal after the pain. Stockholm syndrome. So, far, so it really made me feel like I could complete this challenge. Also, did you know smorgasbord was a Swedish word? Because I certainly did not. I went back home and decided to avenge myself and go back on a run to German Village. And I have some really exciting news for the viewers at home that did not. Ask the run was a success. I did not sh my.
my pants. <laughs> Fruit of the Loom is harmed and dangerous. It's like, I would love to go for more walks, like, but the walking where I am is so boring. Okay, 12 meatballs this time. I felt defeated sucking down There's nothing here. balls in each meal, but as long as I finished, I was gonna be so satisfied. Hey, yo, what the fuck? There was a lot of work to be done still, so I had to stay positive. Good vibes only. Nothing could possibly bring Wasn't me Wasn't even me. Oh my goodness, all. Focus on where you are. Focus. Ikea, a furniture store that sells meatballs. Wait, a furniture store that sells meatballs. I've been at this place the entire time and I haven't even looked at furniture once. It's like I forgot what Ikea actually stands for. We sell furniture. I've we only should heard buy about some. the magical land of cheap Swedish furniture but never got to experience it firsthand. Was today going to be the first time I do it? No, I'm just here for the meatballs. It's uh -huh. a trick. Look at the shirt. The cafeteria man recognized me and gave me some cranberry I have some sauce fake for plans free, here really from nice, except, Ikea. Again, I'm, I'm just here for the meatballs. At the beginning and of the posters. video, if you remember, poster I did frames. say this is going to That's be my easiest it. challenge yet. And to my surprise, I bought some uh, shelves a while ago. I think like two months ago at this point. Out of all the stupid from Ikea. I haven't, uh, I haven't, uh, 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 like they're still disassembled here. But before saying I was done with all of it, there was only one more thing to do they're just Get chilling kelsey and thank her for for breezing the bathroom because i forgot earlier but oh, yeah, and a that, lamp i have a lamp here yeah i've been wanting to decorate this this place but i just I haven't haven't done it, it my life. i was I should. With joy after pulling up should do it on friday like my non-streaming so day <laughs> hey, front entrance i'll miss you the most i went to the counter and only ordered 12 meatballs again because i'm a huge bitch. but it's also kind of like final time so this, this is like the it's like guys basement right but it's also like half of them like they're it's just kind of their storage because you know why not they don't it's just a room that they're not using so there's just stacks of their stuff here <laughs> and i don't really know what to do with <laughs> Thank God. And after filming myself from multiple Need to find a way to hide a cringy it. influencer, I'd officially eaten nothing but Ikea meatballs for three days. Now for the results nobody asked for. In the past 72 hours, I had consumed a total of 152 meatballs, leaving me Yummy. with an average of 50.67 meatballs per day. This is also the equivalent of shoving 7.5 pounds of meat into your mouth. Usually you have to pay to see that. And I Yummy. only spent a total of $75.81. So for that price, you could either get a hundred 152 meatballs or a bed frame at ikea and lastly i really want to thank the employees at ikea for being so damn friendly to me the entire time i really i mean it. 75 dollars for nine meals that's not bad at all really not bad the bottom of my heart and i also thank you for not calling the police on me the entire time and as always yeah. please do not try this at home I am a professional dumbass. I know what I like, baby. I like you. I'm gonna do it, but with something else. I'll think about it. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Have you? But you have to consider the travel cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The driving, right? Oh, he covered Godzilla X car. What do you think about it? Yo, what up? It's so did I confirm an opinion on the movie too? For me, which is kind of boring, but I don't like. It's Your not fucking my kind of horse movie. here to talk about some movies that I saw. We're just uh, the but movies. I'm gonna talk about them. Uh, Godzilla X Kong something something. The the uh, the the new empire is what it's what called. What did it walk into? Not Godzilla what did you? versus Kong. Uh, they're friends in this one. They don't fight each other. Yeah, I thought it was versus, but it was X Kong. <laughs> It's it's only love. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about what some might consider to be spoilers in this film. I don't know if you can really spoil the film. In my opinion, there's nothing really unpredictable that happens, and uh, the plot Did doesn't they kiss? matter. But uh, for those no. of you who do care, just no. click the timestamp to the next one if you don't want to hear spoilers. Does anyone here care about spoilers for Godzilla, X Kong, the New Empire? <laughs> Before I keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> Pause the stream. Come back later. <laughs> Ten minutes, not this entire video. It's probably like five minutes, even at most. 
maybe come back to this after you've seen it if you're really invested in the plot of these films. This is directed by Adam Wingard, who I am not a huge fan of. The films that people consider to be his best are ones that I am either underwhelmed or annoyed by. And his most recent films are pretty much just unanimously considered to be absolute Yo, death shit. Note. Apparently I watched okay. Godzilla vs. Kong, the 2021 film. I don't remember very much about it. It uh, was kind of a disposable film for me. Didn't really leave me with any lasting impact was not really that entertaining at all. This film, I, I guess, is an improvement for me anyway. It is still extremely nonsensical. It's cheesy. It's stupid. The character sucks. The story sucks. The editing is absolutely atrocious. But this film at least kind of leans into some sense of self-awareness or I guess fan service. When you make a Godzilla movie with other kaijus in it, the whole point is just to see them fighting and falling on buildings and you know, just massive extreme tragedy and massive... That's what I thought, especially the, the fucking beginning of this movie. There was so much exposition for these characters that I did not give a shit about. I was so bored. And it was just, okay, well, I'm going to see Godzilla x Kong, right? Like, how bad could it be? Because despite it maybe being bad, I at least get to see giant monsters fight. So that should be entertaining. But then they put all the boring stuff in there, too. Loss of life that uh, you never really feel bad about because it's never really acknowledged in any kind of serious way. They're essentially just in a playground. These buildings might as well be Duplo. Nobody lives in these buildings, I guess. It doesn't really matter. They're so big and they fight each other. And in this movie, they kiss. Mwah. It's the type <laughs> of thing where I'm glad that it doesn't take itself super seriously, even though there are some scenes that kind of do. This more or less knows that it's a big cheese ball slop type film. Not exactly my type of thing, but I watched it anyway. I did not fall asleep, so that's a positive. I was kind of annoyed that this movie was just mostly about Kong the and kiss not really about Godzilla. I, I guess that Kong... That's true. There was so little Godzilla. The, the best thing about this movie is that you see Godzilla curling up like a cat, sleeping in the, in the Coliseum. That's cute. <laughs> is the more yes, empathetic, he's, he's more yeah. human-like character, I guess. He's a big ape. They give him some conflicts and some goals. He has a bad toothache, and they give him a replacement. Then he meets a bunch of other apes, and they bully him over it. Kong gets bullied, and <laughs> there's a baby Kong or something. It's really annoying, but it gets beat up a bit, so that's cool. And uh, not a lot of Godzilla, unfortunately. Despite Godzilla getting getting top billing on the poster and the title. He's not really in the movie that much. The, f the few times we do see Godzilla, he kind of just quickly exterminates whatever other random kaiju that super mega fans of the Godzilla verse would recognize. And although I'm pretty satisfied with the ratio of the kaiju fights versus the was dumb human talking scenes, recharged, it was kind of frustrating that at least two of these kaiju fights were just off screen. Like it would start the scene with two kaijus about out to fight each other and maybe they would get like one hit in and then it would yeah and then it would cut to this yeah 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 and it also happened like you would see like news reports it's like oh godzilla is now in the fucking north pole fighting the the protector gaichu dragon thing that lives over there and you don't even see it or it's like a minute tiamat yeah that's it Cut to the humans doing some dumb nonsense. Thank and then it you. cuts back to the kaiju fight, and it's just the very end of it. Like, like all of the action we're just supposed to you imagine see if it kills in it those super couple fast. fight scenes. True. Yeah, we yeah. more or less just see the aftermath like Godzilla, of at like least the, two of these kaiju the fights. Which is uh, pretty unsatisfying. Whenever we see a death of a human character, it never has any impact, and it's not even cool or fun to watch. There's a lot of dumb and familiar tropes, obviously. The death girl is in class and she's having visions and scribbling stuff on the paper and the desk and then they're like, oh, those are the same symbols as this other bullshit. There's a whole secret culture and society and people... Why did Kong have a prosthetic arm? Uh, he was fighting with... So he was fight. So they, they found, like, this group of all the other apes and... 
They had like a leader Abe. <laughs> they had a, a leader Abe and they were fighting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the leader Abe had uh, had like this uh, this whip but that had superpowers and that control that could control the frostbite dinosaur. And they fought and it damaged his arm. And so he he escaped and he ran to the, the group of people and they were like, yo, we were working on like a prototype of this prosthetic armor thing because uh, we needed to, we wanted to make uh, uh, Kong stronger, but they cut the, they cut the funding of it. Because they felt it wasn't necessary, but turns out that we had already almost finished it, and the prototype is like over at the base that we were at at the beginning. It's it's a coincidence, but I'm gonna fly there right now. We're gonna get the prosthetic and then put it on Kong. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and then he gets to fight Godzilla, and he has like a prosthetic and I put it on him and it's like oh I wonder what he thinks of it and he goes like screaming in the air and puts his fist up with the with the prosthetic he's like yeah I think he likes it yeah we can feel people's thoughts they communicate telepathically and there's a prophecy a, an ancient very, prophecy exactly that it's very conveniently placed <laughs> through the course of the film there are really obvious setups with payoffs that aren't really payoffs when you can see them coming from 20 minutes away one of the other monkeys he's like really obviously a bad guy he's designed to look more evil so he's the evil monkey bad guy and he this does an monkey. evil grunting laugh throughout the movie he's like rah, 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 rah. he's just so satisfied with being evil cuz he's a bad guy and uh the the big things fight each other and it's a lot of the same a lot of the same thing forever but if you like that same thing then this would be a good movie for you and there's nothing wrong with that it's a nearly two hour long film and it didn't feel way too long like sure it got relatively exhausting with just how repetitive it is but it didn't feel nearly as long as i would have expected uh, one of the bad guys gets frozen like frozen solid through some ice thing but you can see his one eyeball moving around behind the ice which is a weird trope and i don't know why that's in this movie because typically when you show something like that it's it's for a kids movie where you want to communicate that no they're not actually dead and that's just how you make sure that the kids aren't scared like oh they're just uncomfortable and immobile and inconvenienced but they smash yeah, they the cold. character into pieces anyway like he's complete <laughs> wait i thought i thought it was you guys throwing something at me <laughs> maybe i should have a png of godzilla being thrown at me completely frozen oh, solid all the way through Ow. because they shatter him. So I don't know why they did that because it doesn't make any sense why his eyeball would be able to move if he's completely frozen through. Because I don't understand it. Cool. It's, I, I guess, just a part of the checklist because the people that made this saw that that was a thing that was done in other things, so they did it. Quite a lot of checklist stuff in this film. There was a lot of licensed music in this film and every single inclusion of every single track seemed like it was just thrown in randomly. No real sense of purpose or vision. It just kind of felt like the Mario movie in that sense. We're playing a familiar song and it could be pretty much any other song given the context of how it's used, but we're playing this one. It's familiar and uh, there's no real point or purpose to it. And we're, we're just doing it, you know, yeah. just cause it's on the checklist, you know. Another it, frustrating hyped, thing about this film is that despite having some really talented actors like Rebecca Hall and Brian Tyree Henry, they're not really given any chance to remind us that they are in fact really good actors the film does not allow for that they're only really there just to say the so plot i was and wondering because i recognized the 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 only dad character the guy and he played in um the the train movie the shinkansen movie <laughs> with uh with kick ass and uh I don't know what the girl's name is. 
and just move along and you're not really supposed to think about anything and you're not really supposed to absorb anything. The entire experience of the movie just flies by and not in any kind of exhilarating way, but more of a detached way. I feel like this movie would have been much better for me if it just had a different director. There are so many choices in this film that are there because they're on the checklist, but they feel so unjustified in context. There are a bunch of random okay. Zack Snyder style slow motion shots and they never really feel properly motivated. Like there's no more significance to them appearing at the point that they did than if they were to appear at any other point in any other fight scene. The entire experience of the film is just so awkward and disjointed and disposable and it's almost fun, but it just it's not quite there for me. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't the worst thing ever. Certainly not the worst Godzilla movie. Certainly not the worst King Kong movie. It was almost fine for what it was. And uh, it's gonna make money because there's kaijus fighting in it and that's the, what people that want to see the kaijus fighting want to see. It delivered on what it promised for the most part. Kinda wish two of the fight scenes weren't just off screen, but you know. And I'm giving this one a very generous four out of 10. Thank you. Okay, okay. Monkey Man. Okay, I'm not gonna watch these because I haven't seen them. I <laughs> saw Monkey. Monkey! Not just the same? Stealth camping, van life gaming, and tacos. Wait, this is indoors now? At least, at least. They covered the rest up. <laughs> Such good content. We can't get it! <laughs> it's mostly that orange cat. So cute. I'm happy they're being fed. Every time I see a meme or a video about those cameras, there's always someone in the comments. Oh my god, please save these cats because there's a torture group in China and they're gonna kill all the fucking cats. I know they've killed some of the cats. I'm just like, that. dude, shut up, please. Like, what the fuck can we do? I, you gotta, right, you gotta ruin the mood. Have you seen the new joke? The trail I have seen a new trailer. I saw that Lady Gaga is playing um Harley Quinn. Wakey wakey. Joke for us today. It's a musical? Oh, that makes sense why they would uh, hire her then. We use music to make us whole. To balance the fractures within ourselves. I'm nobody. I'd say she fits the mood of the... Like, and the look. Of this I film? I haven't done anything with my life like you have. Let's get out of here. Wow. Pretty soon. Just 
Tell us, what's changed, Arthur? Well, I'll tell you what's changed. I'm not alone anymore. That's what we should be talking about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it seems fitting within this universe. I want to see the real you. Like, p putting, uh, what's her name? The Barbie girl in there? It, it, would, it wouldn't be fitting. Hehehehe. <laughs> <laughs> This is October, right? Or is it today? It's today! <laughs> it's 10 4. Fucking Americans! Yeah, October, October 4th. Goddamn. It says today. Why are they lying to us? Are you fucking serious? A trailer review? Chris, why? I used to watch your reviews occasionally. I guess it brings in views. Yeah, exactly. It says the 10th of April. It's today. Top 10 things you missed in the Joker trailer. Teaser trailer, my thoughts. Uh, reaction. But to be fair, also, like, wouldn't surprise me if they got paid for it. Need that YouTube money for IKEA meatballs. <laughs> True. Who the... Who the hell would say the month first? Americans. Filthy Americans. <laughs> okay. Uh, ah, let's uh, start with the game soon. Also, I got tickets to Miko Expo. So, I'm going to be actually experiencing if it's bad or not. When you say April 10th, so logical, when you talk, you say... So say the 10th of April. Say it the other way around. In our lyrics, you just, you just say 10 April. When is that thing? Oh. 10 April. Don't step into the pee. So <laughs> okay, this looks like as though. Why isn't the screen just bigger? And they have like no no effects or anything behind it. I need to find a set list so that I know what to, uh, prepare for, cause... Like, my Hatsune Miku song knowledge is just like, world is mine, melt. You know, the- the old stuff. I don't know what the fuck this song is. Intergalactic Bound. Do they sell the pen lights there, or do you have to bring your own? I assume they also sell them there. <laughs> what Nambona said. I agree.
Man, these creatures are so fucking stupid. Why would you do this? I can mean you're wrong. But it's the second best one. Yours is just the most unimportant because everyone already knows that. <laughs> no, 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 they're stupid. Stupid creatures. Ugly. Not cute. <laughs> There is more. I just got water in my rags. Grandma Red Pen that comes down. Oh, that's me! <laughs> Ow! Hack Panda. I wish it didn't have all this stupid music. So cute! Does this have music? I wanna hear them chewing. Yep. Yum. There we go. Nom nom. I'll do the sound effect. How do these creatures survive? <laughs> In captivity only. <laughs> oh, look at them! Look at them! They would probably make great pets if they weren't endangered species. Yeah. It's so stupid. <laughs> it's so cute. I want to squeeze them. Okay. Enough. Let's play a visual novel. <laughs> you can't call me me. <sighs> Dogs would be endangered if we didn't domesticate them. Oh, so what you were saying is that's how we... That's how we save... That's how we save red pandas. They call me Miku, Miku, wee I'm fucking Miku. wee I'm fucking Miku. Okay. Uh, can't wait for the Miku concert on our CRT. <laughs> Hatsune Miku on... Let's go! Maybe someone made that. No. What the fuck? On Letterman? He was shit. Oh, now you're getting all these videos. <laughs> if you...
Wait, what was the tweet? Door is now open for VIP ticket holders. Advertised it as being like uh, the hologram stuff. That that that's what I'm wondering. Like, is it actually false advertising? They, I know they did false advertise um, the the merchandise because they would say that it was open earlier for the VIP, and then they later said it was it was not like on Twitter. Couldn't get one of the ninety glow sticks for sale at the stand. Good thing I packed my 700, 7 thousand MA face array L gas cycle four hundred fifty. What the fuck? <laughs> Only ninety. And also, like, the, the tickets, like, the VIP tickets are over a hundred bucks. Like, I, I bought a regular ticket. It was, like, I think it was, like, 60 euros or something. So I'd say that's about, like, 70 dollars. It's not, this is, that's not cheap for a fucking concert. Because I'm going to, like, I bought tickets to two concerts. One of them just for, like, a regular singer. That one was, like, 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no seventy dollars. Yes, you can count the oil take it to the fucking Krypton official like Miku site. I read on Reddit a comment who said their mother, who was struggling financially, raised money to buy tickets for her two daughters with a lot of hard work. Oh, man. <laughs> you see Miku on your wrist, but how about a 43-inch Sony Smart TV? <laughs> Poor Portland uses the LED screen as well. Seems the hologram rumors earlier were fake news. Those are just rumors? No. This is gonna be the same. They're gonna reuse the, the same shit. <laughs> this is so sad looking. <laughs> the screen. <laughs> Holy shit. Do you know the way to San Jose? Da 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 da. Do you know the way to San Jose? What happened? Okay, I'm curious. Everyone is complaining about how the LED screen event looks terrible. Okay. 
if so they did not say it was with an led screen so what were the previous miku expos like then like i don't know fucking 2021 This is online. Oh, right. This is during COVID. <laughs> Has there been older Miku Expos? VR? Yeah, you have like this one. Like, this is a lot better, but also... I mean, during 2021, they also didn't really... They were still very cautious at events and stuff. Especially in Japan. Like, this is also a screen, but it looks a lot better hidden. Because of you... This is what people were hoping for. Yeah, this looks sick! The angle helps. Yeah, I mean, it's like like I said, right? Like I went to the Hololive one and I was I was on the side and also it very obviously looked like a screen. It's a lot better. Like the stream looks better than IRL, but it definitely does not look as bad as the Miku one. <laughs> Cuz the screens and stuff are way smaller. If they said they were going to use an LED screen when the tour was announced, there wouldn't be an issue. People paid upwards to $200 expecting the usual transparent screen setup and didn't find out it would be different until they were literally inside the venue. Miku Expo has been known for the hologram projections. I paid $300 for a good seat. Holy shit. I paid for a flight and hotel to watch Miku when I could have just watched this on my TV at home. <laughs> Even VTuber concerts like this don't get a tiny LED screen. Which is also usually cheap or even free. No, I, it was... Well, the one that you're probably thinking of was not cheap. But it was cheaper than Miku. I think it was like the holo was like 9,000 yen or something. Like it was not definitely not cheap. $80? I don't, I don't know. You get so much content. I mean, if you want to watch the official stream, you have to pay for that. So they didn't fails advertise it as a hologram. Yeah, they just didn't say anything about it at all. It's what people mostly just expected because the previous concerts were a lot nicer. The archive says live concert and using 3D graphics to perform on stage, which by definition is kind of false advertising as neither gets to, gets used to be LED or hologram. But understandable dialogue, they didn't specify just a TV recording broadcast either. Not including the pre-show that was free. Oh, man. They've already used the LED screen for the Miku X Kodo concerts way before that. Thing is... I'm just gonna let it play, but like... 
low volume. Thing is, both Miku Fest 24 and Miku Xcodo, the reason for the LSD screen is pretty evident. The transparent screen plus the projectors take room that the decoder percussionist or the DJ mixing table at Miku Fest would need to use. So they built the screen into the staging in order to fit everything. That said, it's true that they have elevated the problem if they had done the same as in those concerts and properly built a staging. Yeah, that's that's also like huge. Because it looks like Miku is like actually standing on something here. It looks good. And it just doesn't blend in. It's it's just a screen in the middle of a podium. Yeah, exactly. The illusion is more convincing. Uh, someone said, I was at Thunderbolt and it was 100% projection. I don't know. It, it all comes down to... It's understandable why people are upset. It looks ass. And people should have the right to complain. Especially when the tickets are so damn expensive. <sighs> yeah, pro or you probably just have to be in the middle or front. <laughs> Paid for a VIP and hearing that I might not be able to get some merch that it's upsetting I have. I have been to past event and it's been a hologram. What the heck? Well, uh, let's see. Let's see. Because the one that I'm going to is way later in the year. So maybe by then they will improve? You're going later? Oh, this month? Oh, have fun. Going to Mount Melbourne. Okay. Um, I am uh, going to boot up the game now. Only hour forty five minutes in. <laughs> yep. Uh I'm gonna get a drink. Sing your highest note. <laughs> Melt. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna BRB and make a cup of tea. Then we'll start the game.
Okay, we are ready to roll. At least I am. You guys have to just go along with it. Okay, moving this here. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hope you enjoyed the concert. Love is War is my favorite Miku song. Excellent taste. Just love all the old ones because those are the ones that I know. <laughs> oh god, this game opens at the tiniest fucking resolution. Uh, it opens at 10, 24, 7, 80, 68. What the heck? Okay, sure, seems fine. the karaoke place the new love and hero song is out is that how you uh, is that how japanese girls listen to new music they just go to karaoke place i'm not feeling up to it today the story creeped me out earlier do you want to hear it what uh sure you remember miss yamaguchi she wears those big glasses I heard she's gone missing. <laughs> karaoke, is this a reference to the hit chill ass art game karaoke? Damn! It could be! <laughs> Pain. <laughs> what? No one knows where she is? Nope, she just disappeared. She just up and poofed from the library. Oh my god, it took her. One of the student librarians said she was researching something there. But then she vanished. But she's super diligent, right? One of the students thought it was weird that she'd up and leave like that. So he checked in on her. But when he did... Oh! Oh, what the fuck? The only thing left was... her arm. 
I tried to do my taxes. Yo, good job. I still have to do them. Nice, nice, nice. Must be a relief. It had her really weird scar on it, so it was definitely her arm. Oh, it's like a bite mark. A scar. Oh, guys, uh, I, I, uh, I remember my dream from last night. Sort of vaguely. So, in my dream, I got a tattoo, despite not really... Like, consciously getting a tattoo. And I remember showing people, it was like, Hi, this is my first tattoo! And it was like a full art sleeve of... Uh, Jill... And... Uh... What the fuck? Like, the, the, the res... Just, like, the Resident Evil 3... Uh... Cast? <laughs> What's his name again? The stars guy. What the heck? Why can't I come up with it now? Anyway, it was Jill and that guy. And I, so for some reason, got, like... A full arm sleeve of it. Nemesis! Yes! <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> and it was just like... Okay, I guess I got this. And the art was apparently really good. <laughs> so I didn't mind having the tattoo. Despite not... Really... Asking for it or wanting it in the first place. And... I also had a tattoo... Of a... Uh, like, one of those runes from Berserk. <laughs> I had that on my other arm. Like, around the elbow. On my inner... on my inner arm. And I vividly remember in the dream... I asked for the Bloodborne rune. But they gave me one from Berserk. Like, the one, one of those characters having, like, their neck. <laughs> anyway, that was that. I got tattoos, and one of them was one of them was from Resident Evil. One of them was from Berserk. <laughs> and I was like, "This is not what I want," but they were kind of cool anyway, so I didn't mind it that much. <laughs> anyway, this kind of looks like a tattoo. That's why I was reminded. That was my dream. It looked like a dog bite. She showed it to me once. She had no idea where it came from. For real? There was a scar like that on Miki's leg too. Huh? Miki? Wait, that's... The girl who went missing, yeah. That's crazy. Lol, that's crazy. Maybe that rumor is true. The one about the cursed scar. Cut it out, you're scaring me! Oh, he has one too. I hear snatches of an idiotic ghost story. They're speaking seriously, but it's obvious they don't believe a word. They're only killing time. Rumors are the best way to do that. The sun's about to set. It's gotten later than I planned. I shouldn't have stuck around to hear that story. I better hurry. Oh. That's loud. Looking at getting a simple tattoo of the Protoss emblem from StarCraft? I mean, that's pretty cool, because it's like, it's kind of subtle, right? I saw also one earlier today on Twitter where someone got a full arm sleeve with Mario and the gang on it. Nintendo's gonna chop their fucking arm off for that. But that's just so horrendous, like, oh, you want that on your arm, man? A huge mansion is in front of me. Strange, I'm sure I was just... 
My vision blurs. My ears are buzzing. Uh, my head's swimming. It's almost like I'm drunk. What time is it? I glance at my wrist, but my watch is gone. Did I put it in my coat pocket? But all I find is a business card. In elegant printed letters is a name. Saya Kujo Spirit Healer. Hmm. On the back of a, is a photo of the mansion. I guess this must be Kujo Mansion then. Kujo Mansion. Saya Kujo. Those names sound familiar somehow. Yeah, there's like this Genshin character whose name is that. <laughs> Only one way to find out. Taking a deep breath, I reach out to knock. I stop when I see something on my wrist. Oh! It's a strange scar. You see this and think it's a scar? This just looks like painted on. When did that... I could just be imagining this, but... I feel an icy chill when I look at it. Exactly, Sarah Kudo. <laughs> My fist pounds on the door, no reply. Oh. A light appears on the second floor window. It's probably too far away from the door for them to hear me knocking. I grasp the doorknob and find it unlocked. No point in staying outside. So this dude just got teleported here and now he's... It's like, oh, well, the business card says this venture, and I guess I'm going in. The inside is shrouded in darkness. A small beam of light from the window is the only way I can see anything in here. Wow, what a mansion. If only I had Jill, the master of unlocking, on my arm. It's dead silent, except for the constant ticking of the clock's second hand. I must be at the entrance hall. The atrium extends to the second floor. Anyone home? There's no reply to my shout. Maybe there's they've soundproofed this place so that they can so that they can't hear me down here. I guess I need to go upstairs then. A staircase is just visible up ahead. I walk towards it. Cutting across the hall. Yeah, there's a guy on my chest. <laughs> my ears catch a strange noise. I turn to look where it's coming from. Oh my god, a woman. Someone's there, enveloped by the dark. I think they're staring at me. Talk. Hello? Hi, Miku! I call out, but the person remains silent. Gulping. I hesitantly make my way over. Trepidation slowing my steps. It's a young girl. She doesn't move an inch as I approach. This is a doll! At least it seems that way to me. It doesn't look like she's even breathing. A corpse. Great. I creep myself out, I start to sweat. What should I do? Touch her! With a shaky hand, I slowly reach out and touch her skin. I'm not sure what I expected, but it feels unnatural somehow. Stiff and cold. I press down on her arm, and she makes the strange sound I heard earlier. Ah, now it makes sense. She's a doll. Even the doll... ...should it please you. A doll's joints creak when they've moved. That's what made the noise. What a relief, if disappointing.
I carefully begin climbing the stairs, making sure not to trip. As I reach the landing, the sharp sound of a bell breaks the silence. It seems to be coming from above me. Thank you for the hydrates. My tea is still very hot. Look, I have it in my hand right now. Looking up, I can spy the outline of a clock. Hi, Corinne. Oh my... Hey, buddy. Uh, approach? How do you play a game and hold tea at the same time? Because it's just a visual novel. I have my left hand on my tea and my right hand is on the mouse. It's an antique grandfather clock. The noise is definitely coming from here. I reach towards the glass to check inside. All of a sudden, it stops chiming. Silence the sense, broken only by ticking. Ow! I guess it's fixed now, but... The timing was a little too spot on. Was it really a coincidence? All these strange occurrences make me uneasy, but I continue on to the room with the light. Right hand on mouse, optical mouse? Uh, a computer mouse? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? But again, there's no reply. Knocking on your empty brain, Corrine. Your empty skull. There's nothing going on there. <laughs> He's just closing in his eyes like, Oh, this feels good. <laughs> I push on the door. Now it's one hand on the pussy, one hand on the mouse. <laughs> it's dark inside. Strange, I definitely saw lights on in here when I was outside. Wafting through the room is an awesome... <laughs> it's sugary like a ripe fruit. The whole room is permeated with it. Some kind of aromatherapy, maybe? It's not a particularly pleasant smell, though. The aroma draws me further into the room. The floor under my feet feels off. It's wet! Oh, I pick you. You're so soft. You're so soft. Oh, chin scratching. I know this scent, this metallic tang. What? Lightning flashes and I catch a glimpse of something. The start startingly grotesque object stretches out across the floor beneath my feet. Something strange is there. I want to see it. It's so bizarre that I can't stop staring. Coin is giving me slow blinks. Blooming flowers are everywhere. Pretty. They're bursting out of this woman's stomach. They're, her blood-soaked body overwhelmed with them. I wrench my gaze away, horrified. But the hellish image is blurred into my mind. I can feel my entire body shaking. Bile rises. I'm going to throw up. In the next instant, the lights are on. Wait, what? That's not all. The body is gone, leaving only a stain. This doesn't make sense. It's a bad dream. At least, I'd really much prefer if it was. 
but the faint smell that remains in a blood stain crush any ho crushed any hope I I had of that. I beat a retreat from the room in an effort to escape this whole bizarre situation. When I stumble back into the hall, the lights are on here as well. I decide to have another look around. Excuse me. All the furnishing in there is in here is old enough to be antiques. They match this old-fashioned mansion. Creepy. A large doll sits on a couch. This must be the figure I saw in the dark. One would easily mistake this for a human if they couldn't see the ball joints. Probably belongs to the owner of this mansion. Just get the fuck out of there! Oh! So what do I do now? Contact the police? Her stomach was full of flowers, sir, and her corpse got up and vanished like fog. Like anyone would believe that. They will probably at least investigate maybe the freaking blood stain. Oh. Hello? The doll moved. It spoke. A different kind of shredder runs through me than the one when I found the corpse. Up until this point, I was nothing more than an observer to all these freaky events. I could distance myself from it, but now... A doll is talking to me. Rose and Maiden reference! Um, desu? Uh, damn. I watched Rose and Maiden, but I don't really remember anything from it. But I do remember the Desu doll. <laughs> Have I startled you? If so, I sincerely apologize. My master ordered me to behave as a normal doll until told otherwise. The words are elegant and refined. But her face never moves an inch. She may look human, but she clearly isn't. She slowly folds her hands together. So she can move too. I am sorry for not introducing myself. I'm called Mary. You have likely seen a number of oddities here already. I see. My master, Sayakujo, was unable to escape from the mark then. Sayakujo? Does she mean the corpse? But wait, w what about this mark? What's this about a mark? Lady Saya was searching for a way to escape the mark. Were you... Not also called here by her because of the mark on your arm? Oh, it's like all the hands. The art's really good though. She must be talking about this weird scar. Did Saya Kujo invite me to this mansion? When I try to remember, my head hurts. I have something to tell you in place of my late master. But I would like to ask one thing first. Do you know your own name? Well, that was a much simpler question than I had been expecting. Can I type it or... I break out into a sweat. Corin, I forgot my name. Corin is sitting next to the monitor like falling asleep. My throat is drying up. Mine too. I'll drink some tea soon. Why can't I answer? Ow! I'm shocked to find I'm coming up blank. I see. Then it is as I thought. Somehow, Mary knows what's going on with me. Before I offer an explanation, please decide on a temporary name. Things will go much easier if I have a name which... by... uh... by which to call you. It is also likely you will find it hard to remain calm if you are nameless. Yuria! Better to have some placeholder name than continue life as a hollow nameless being. Or was the name? Claire? Enter the protagonist's last name. 
It's not even... We don't even get that typing. We get an on-screen keyboard. My cat's in the front of the camera again. Okay, he moved. <laughs> Colleen, can you leave? Okay, you're gonna sit down? I see. <laughs> Colleen. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh... <laughs> of... Can I have like a space? Yeah, I'm frozen because of my cat. <laughs> Let me show you guys how he's sitting. <laughs> Ow. Capture. Uh, I can't see. Where is Twitch? Where is OBS? Okay, here's OPS. Bro. <laughs> um, how do I go back? Backspace? Backspace doesn't work. Oh, he, he, he's, he's sitting out the hell. Because he was on the backspace button. <laughs> Corwin, move! Get out of the way! Oh, X is delete. Okay, okay, okay. I... No. I can't see the screen. Is this, is this the L? He's like, his face is right in front of it. Yes. Yuri. Uh. Yes. You have a Loris. Yes. Beard and glasses. <laughs> I'm Yuria of Iluris. Understood. Lord of Iluris? 
Now, I shall explain to you about the mark. He's like looking at the head, head at the anime girl. What do you think of her, Corin? Yeah, looking at her anymore? It is the seal of death. Those who have it will soon die. You do not believe me? I am certain this sounds absurd to the one who has led an uneventful life. However, my master master's death proves it to be irrefutably true. The corpse's sweet stench comes back to me. That didn't seem like a work like the work of humans. I am afraid that the horror of the mark does not stop there. Victims slowly lose their memories until the day they die. They face death all... All the while suffering from the terror of losing oneself. Memory loss? That can't be. That means I am... Yes. The fact that you have forgotten your own name that proves that death is coming. Lord of Alurus, you... Are dying? Oh, we'll die this very dawn. Come in. Move. You want more space? I can give you more space, okay? Yeah, you can lay down. Ow! Don't bite me! I just remember being completely stunned at what Mary revealed to me. I can probably attribute it to memory loss caused by the mark. The next thing I know... I'm lying in a guest room in the mansion. I'm moving the camera slightly so that he's not in front of it as much anymore. Stop leaning down. Boop. I vaguely recall dragging myself up the stairs and coming here. I must have fallen asleep at some point, and thanks to that, I feel a lot better. But this is the blood body room. I'll die at dawn, huh? I'll try saying it out loud. It's definitely shocking, but I can't see how it feels real yet. Doesn't make sense. Way out of the blue. But if it's true... Is waiting for my untimely death the only thing I can do? <sighs> it might be a good idea to ask Mary more about it. I find Mary sitting in the exact same spot as before. She hasn't moved an inch. I doubt the doll gets bored waiting like humans do. Oh, hi-yo! Are you feeling better? Uh... Sort of. Oh, thank you! Panda. Kawi! Thank you! For the 17 months! Panda. Kawi! He said panda! He's getting pissed. <laughs> thank you! Since it appears that you've come down, I would like to ask a question. What will you do now? I can guide you down only two paths. The first is to wait for death. The second is to fight the mark. C can you help me? If that is what you wish, yes. My master was researching the mark. A few days prior to her death, she found a way to escape it. Regretfully, she passed before she was able to inform me. Of course. She doesn't know anything after all. There is some time yet before dawn. You have a slim chance. Salvation is a thin thread dangling from heaven. Would that you would grab hold of it, and I shall do my utmost to help. What will you do? I guess it boils down to whether I trust her. If she's right about all this, my time on Earth is up at dawn. 
My cat is looking at the mouse again. That's why I'm moving it. <laughs> if I don't want to die, there is no other choice but to resist the mark until then. <laughs> so cute. If she's lying, I'll be fine when morning comes. But I'm really alright... Am I really alright with that? Ugh. People are being killed in nonsensical, grotesque ways. Am I going to turn a blind eye to it? Don't pounce the monitor, right? At most, he's just gonna, like, poke it with a paw. This is a life or death decision. I need to think about it carefully. Live or die. Uh, okay. Deadly choices. You will be faced with choices that can result in death. There is limited time and your soul power will continue to drain. Time's up or wrong answers will result in game over. So be quick, but also careful in finding the right answer. Restoring soul power. Completing a daily choice will restore some soul power. Dialogue will be sped up while pressing Q. But certain dialogue cannot be sped up. Okay. I'm gonna drink some tea. <sighs> Why are you like this? Ah, don't bite me. Will you quietly wait for death or struggle against a mark? Oh. Well, fight, right? Like, what else can we do? Oh, we survived. Oh, he's, he's sitting down again. Look at him, he's being so cute again. <laughs> I've decided to trust you. As you say, Lord of Alaris. Then I shall carry out the dying wish of my master and aid you. Ow. I cannot do much, but feel free to request anything you wish of me. He's like laying down, but... His head is low, so... It's not covering the camera. This works. I made up my mind. That doesn't mean I know what I should do. I know squat about the supernatural, and losing my memory makes research impossible. But I don't have a moment to lose. <laughs> and now it comes from the front door. Who'd come here this late at night? What a sign of fate! It seems that other mark bearers have arrived. Is it instinct that she knows these things? Maybe she has some kind of mysterious power, being a talking doll and all. I beg your pardon, Lord of Valorus. I do apologize, but could you go greet our guests in my stead? They may experience a shock if a doll such as myself welcomes them. Okay. I wonder who it is, though. Who I find at the door are not who I expect to see this like this late at night. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, 
them. We came to see Professor Kujo. Who are you? I can't say I'm a total stranger since I'm here in this mansion. I'm, uh... I'm her boyfriend. <laughs> Professor Kucha is pretty serious, so that's kind of a surprise. She seems to know Saya. Now that I think about it, the business card did say Spirit Healer. Going off this girl's accessories, I get that she's a huge occult fan. Oh, you're right. I'm Moe Watanabe. I'm here to talk to her about this article she wrote in the OOP Arts Monthly. She pulls an occult magazine out of her bag. Inside is a picture of the mark. Coke Zero gets me employing. Oh, I, I also have a Pepsi Max. I wonder if it's gonna scare my cat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry, buddy. He went... Ooh. Smell? A soul inhabiting disease that erases memories. Inquire at Kuja Mansion. Um... This is the same scar, right? Moa lifts her skirt up to show me her leg. Oh my god! Right there, on her right thigh is the mark. I think I know what the article means by erasing memories. I've been super forgetful lately. I'm even blanking on my friends' names. It's never happened to me before. Do you think the scar is doing it? The article is obviously bogus. I'm taking another picture of my cat. <laughs> Good boy. The young boy scoffs. Even kids know better than to believe in ghosts or curses these days. And a high schooler fell for it. You must be embarrassed about that. But... Tsukasa... Weren't you hanging around out in front of the mansion's gate? Fess up, your scar scares you. Tsukasa seems to have no retort to that. He silently sulks. Looks like a bullseye. It's clear they're both mark bearers. I better bring them over to meet Mary. Moe shrieks excitedly when she gets close. Oh my god, it's so cute! It's a doll, yeah? I've, I've never seen one this big before. The craftsmanship is so detailed. It's almost like it's alive. It's gonna talk. She's gonna say like, Oh, I am alive. What? What? It spoke? With that, the two new visitors join our number. They enter this monstrous... Monstrous world. They hover over the precipice of death. Mary tells Moe and Tsukasa about the mark once again... Once they regain their composure. All about the steady memory loss and their imminent death. It sounds like a ridiculous story, but it gains validity coming from someone like her. But the face is pale. Both of their faces is pale. Now... If you came specifically here because you believed Lady Saya's article... You must have already experienced the pain of losing your memories. Moa admitted as much earlier, but I can see Tsukasa's face darken. So it must be happening to him too. 
Hey, Moe, I'd like to confirm something. Where were you when you got the mark? Uh, my amnesia seems to be worse than theirs. So they might remember. I'm not positive, but... Uh, I think my mark might be a curse from Hanahiko. Hanahiko? This name is familiar to me. He is the ghost the resident children of the town whisper about, correct? My master was interested in him. So, Sayakuja was curious too. Could be connected to the mark somehow. I'd like to hear more about this ghost. As you wish. Lord of Iluris, I like that. I think you guys should call me Lord of Iluris. <laughs> or maybe just Lady Iluris. Okay. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lady. <laughs> All of it is okay. <laughs> toot toot. Oh, did you hear? About that ghost boy all the schools in each city are talking about. Sounds like Hanahiko is back. I heard that he can appear if... ...you peek in a school mirror at night. Corrine is blocking camera. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see tell him to move. Good boy. Yeah. He will ask you something. Am I pretty? No, you ugly. Hey, hey, you ugly. But you tell him no. You'll be... If you tell him no, you'll be fine. But if you say yes... Give me that red stuff then. What? And then he just disappears. But that's not all. Wait, what's your cat's name? Corin. Hanahiko hates adults, you know? I heard that if the person he asks is an adult, they will die. And not just drop dead. Their blood is drained from them. And next to the corpse... ...is a single rose. Okay. <laughs> a rose dripping with blood. Oh my god, and they were... There was hyper-realistic blood coming out of their eyes. Nitsune, thank you for following. <clears throat> Passing from one person to another, assumptions, assumptions and errors mix in. But they also hold a hint of truth. Miss Moe, do you know anything else? I think I probably got my mark. Queen. Psst. He's looking at the high school girl. Corin, are you pervert? It's a kid, you know? Okay. There, there we go. This has to be some sort of clue. I should ask her more about it. Mmm... My big dream is to write about the occult, so I'd love to see a ghost. I found this article in a magazine mentioning Hanahiko was seen there. Writing to Google Doc <laughs> I figured that place be easier to sneak in than a regular school. Since it's been closed down. What should I ask next? Well, was it there? I don't think so. But I can't really say for sure. I went to the mirror. But a shiver suddenly ran down my spine. I got spooked and left. I noticed it later in the bath. 
A strange scar was suddenly on my thigh. It really surprised me. I realized immediately that it had to be what Professor Kujo wrote about. I think I have a handle on what happened. No way to know for sure about the ghost. Oh, I think for this guy it was like he heard those high school girls talking about a ghost, right? But there's no denying she had the mark after returning home from ele from H Elementary. Then maybe... Tsukasa glances down at his left hand. Mine might be from Hanahiko too. I noticed it after I got home from T Elementary. Their ghost was seen at a lot of schools in H City, right? Maybe he has remembered something. I better ask him some questions too. I go to school there. You've probably heard of it since it's a top-ranked elementary school in H City. What should I ask next? Maybe around sunset? I was heading home until I realized I forgot something and turned back. No, and I didn't get chills or anything either. Oh, but I think I passed a mirror. I went to the bathroom before going home. I don't think he knows anymore. Their stories are pretty similar to the Hanahiko rumors. It can't just be a coincidence. Hmm. You must have investigated... You must investigate the places where Hanahiko appeared. For their sake as well as yours. Uh, that's all well and good, but... Uh, what exactly am I investigating? Death and life coexisting. If the mark originated there, then a way to erase it will also be there. You must find it. Find a key you need to break the mark's curse. That is the only way to escape. And all of a sudden, a huge burden was dropped on my shoulders. It seems that Hanahiko appeared at two schools. Where will you investigate? The abandoned one, of course. Yeah, that's probably wise. They'd arrest you on the spot if you tried to sneak into a regular school. <laughs> a middle-aged man who can't recall his name, let alone address or job title. I'd have no excuses if I got caught. I mean, you would. The question is if they would believe you, I guess. Wanna get going then? Let's do this. A second. Uh, of course. I haven't given up on seeing Hanahiko yet. She grins at me. Is she really strong or is this blind optimism? I'm going to. Hey, not you too. Seriously? My life's on the line here. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to be alone in this mansion either. <laughs> I don't want the reason to reason I died to be because you messed something up. That's pretty bold. Good thing you're cute. <laughs> but to bring kids along with me is uh I understand your hesitation. But the mark does not discriminate, staying alive with children and adults. If they wish to fight their fate, you should honor that. I suppose human logic doesn't fly when dealing with the supernatural. We'll need to prepare ourselves for the worst if we were going to survive. Please take only one mark bearer with you, however. A large group will increase the odds of you being de detected by spirits. I also ask that you do not waste time dawdling with the others on the way. It is possible unnecessary contact may hasten the effects of the mark. Only engage when absolutely necessary. Keep contact with others to a minimum. Okay, then we're taking the high school girl. Don't you think it'll be a good idea to take notes on what Mary's told us? Your memory is getting worse all the time. We don't want to forget anything. Uh, yeah. Pretty smart idea, actually. New info was added. Okay. Yep. Pink Popo, thank you for following. Uh, 
Okay. Uh. First, we have to get to H Elementary. Mary says we're free to use the car in the garage. Okay, nice. The garage is detached from the mansion. The vintage model van and bicycles only... ...accent the elegant interior. <coughs> Thank God for careless people. The car key was left on the table. Time to go. Uh, hey. According to Mary, you lost a bunch of your memories, right? Is it really okay for you to drive? That's like muscle memory. Don't worry, it'll be fine, I think. It'll all come back when I take the wheel. <laughs> Part of that is to convince myself. But aren't you missing your license? If a cop finds us, we'll have more to worry about than Hanahiko. She's right about that. But our lives are on the line, so we don't have much of a choice. Take the bikes. Once the mark's gone, I will remember. Then I'll just have them reissue it. Assuming I ever got one. Uh, now I'm even more worried. Just drive safe, okay? Yeah, money. Let's drive. Lever the Lamborghini, roll up in the blue bikini. <laughs> Human bodies are remarkable. Don't sniff the phone. Oh, you're leaving? Oh, okay, bye. Bye, kitty. You were so cute, though. You were so comfy. Freaking weirdo. <laughs> But the second my hands touched the wheel, I wasn't worried anymore. My muscles reacted quicker than I expected, and it's now easy to guide this monster down the road. But now, thoughts of what I can no longer do start to filter into my head. Hey, mister. Moe pipes up hesitantly. I probably let the silence go on for too long. She doesn't seem as cheerful as she was a little while ago. What's it like to lose your memories? I don't know. I don't remember. It's hard to answer the question. What do you mean? Like, do they all go at once or a few pieces at a time? What if you're only left with sad memories? I'd hate that. I don't think it works like that, but um... I have no idea if it's getting worse or better. Hey guys, thank you so much for the 12 months! Welcome, welcome! Thank you for the year. I don't know what I was like to begin with, so there's nothing to compare to. Wow, 12 months! In that sense, rather than the memories vanishing... It's like everything's been painted white. That's what it feels like. Oh. You sure are mature, mister. You take everything so calmly. The conversation dwindles, leaving only the sound of the tires on the road. Then thoughts start popping into my head again, one after another. I know you have to check out that mirror. But what else should we investigate? What do you think? Moe glances over at me. Uh, the bathroom? I don't know. No idea. I can't even remember my own name. How the hell am I supposed to know what we're doing? Ah, please. I'm really counting on you. Think whatever you want. I'm talking to a child. I need to show restraint and be a good example. But that's definitely how I really feel. I stare down at the steering wheel. Ugh. The doll in the mansion. M mark bearers. The mark spirits.
And the mysterious death. So I'm kind of looking at it now. Damn, they popped her boob open. She like became a plant. It's cool how it looks like... It looks like flowers and organs at the same time. I like it. It's good art. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be buried under all of the crushing thoughts that keep popping into my mind. What awaits me down this dark road? I feel a flutter from the mark on my wrist, like it's trying to warn me. My brain I might not be able to understand, but my body can sense it. The death is closing in. If that's happening, that's... If that's happening... Isn't a problem anymore. It's more, how long do I have left? How much longer is it? Uh... I almost yell, but I managed to swallow it down with effort. Oh, yo, thank you! Oh, what the heck? Drew, thank you so much for the five gift subs. Let's go! I appreciate it! Ooh, everybody enjoy! Thank you, thank you. Gonna drink some tea real quick. This game is a lot of talking. <laughs> oh, thank you! Thank you! Yuri a cheer. Yuri a cheer. Nine breaker. Thank you so much for the four months. Thank you guys. Ooh. Yeah. Level 2 hype train, let's go! Thank you, thank you. Ugh. Oop! Meow! <coughs> I almost yelled, but I managed to swallow it down with effort. I think we're almost there. Really? It's closer than I thought. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. Is that a love hotel? At any time, it could. On the roll today, Yuri, huh? I'm talking a lot and I'm drinking a lot, so... Death is a lot closer than you think. Hell yeah, I will go in there. Looking ominously in the moonlight, the school definitely looks abandoned. For quite a number of years, in fact, the walls are starting to crack. All the windows are broken as well. A thick chain is in front of the main gate to keep people from going in. You can just step over this! Just a just a... Hey, you there! Not another step! The enthusiastic voice comes from a man in guard uniform. He must be patrolling the area. Looks like we got caught. This property belongs to the city. No one's allowed inside, didn't you know? Or are you up to something? A bunch of people have been coming here on dare since it's... Here on dares since it's haunted. You aren't one of them, are you? Yes, that's it exactly. It's haunted? Well, that's what the rumors are saying anyway. It's a giant pain. Well, I not in agreement. It is pretty famous after all. The guard signs. <sighs> anyway, the school's of limits, so you can't go inside. I don't want any trouble in my first shift here, so please leave. Okay. Hmm. Muttering to himself, the guard makes his way into the school. As you watch him leave, Moe leans over and whispers. Damn, there wasn't a guard when I snuck in here before. We better not get caught. 
Moving around a haunt. Use the arrow keys to move. The map shows which way you're facing and where you can go. Yo, there is gameplay? Pushing open the doors, I head inside. Oh, it's dark. We can't see anything like this. The moonlight doesn't reach inside. We'll just have to use the flashlight. Oh, we have one. But if we use the flashlight, the guard finds us. Can't do anything about it, I guess. Anyway, the mirror is... Um, mm, I'm pretty sure it's on the right, on the staircase. Move the mouse to search the current area. Shine a flashlight on areas of interest and press A. Pressing S ends the search. <laughs> Battered shoe rack is covered in dirt. Okay, it's just the same thing. There are platforms of broken wooden slats in front of the shoe rack that creak when we step on them. A half-torn poster. It says lost and found in large letters at the top. I touch the paper. It disintegrates the second my fingers reach it and it scatters through the air. Nothing else looks interesting. Okay. A flyer containing warnings and a list of contacts. Do I have tools? I take out the letter opener, but what do I do with it? I don't have a particularly good idea. <laughs> Okay, let's move. Huh? As we enter the hallway, a small shadow flits across our feet. A cat! I turn on the flashlight to find... Oh, a bunny! So cute! Was it the school pet? The black rabbit squeaks and runs away. It rushes towards the eastern end of the school. Ah, uh, it ran away. Is it telling us to follow? Ah, uh, yeah, right. New info was added. Okay. It looks like something smashed the fluorescent lights. They're shattered beyond repair. Okay. Eh. No, I want to go that way. Climb the stairs. Okay. Fucking bunui. Oh, here is the mirror. This is it. It's the mirror I saw last time. I'm sure of it. Huh. This then, a dull pain runs through my wrist. Like something is biting into my skin. To distract myself from the pain, I keep talking with Moe. It certainly looks normal. Yeah, what should we do? Uh, touch it. I face forward and silently wipe the gray mirror with my hand. As expected, I can't make anything out. All I see is my own shadow reflected as a vague shadowy lump. My shadow sways in the mirror. At least that's what I thought at first. I figured the shadow moved because I had. But the next time the shadow moves, a cold shiver runs down my spine. That's not my shadow. Something is in the mirror.
Moe yelps and steps back. Well, that confirms I'm not hallucinating. There really is something in there. Every muscle in my body locks. I try to look away, but I can't even close my eyes. The figure's mouth twist. I don't want to look, but I can't even close my eyes. It opens its mouth. An odd voice pierces my ears. Live or die. Hey, am I pretty? <laughs> no. If only I had that red stuff. Ah, okay, so you definitely have to pay attention. Okay, I'm glad it was correct. I wasn't sure. It's like, you have to say no and then you're safe. But it hated adults. I can't see well. Are you a grown up? I'm the tallest in my class. <laughs> <laughs> Big people aren't allowed in school. Suddenly the mirror cracks. It cracked. Now I can't see. No more big people here. The figure disappears. Yeah, we outsmarted the ghost. A scream echoes from the other side of the school. Moe sinks to the floor. They gasp in panic disbelief for a while. I feel much the same. What was that? That was probably... Hanahiko. I couldn't say it. The word sticks in my throat. My mouth is completely dry. Mine too. Okay, I'm out of tea. I can't believe this. I thought I wanted to see a ghost. But, but to see one that clearly... Moe seems to shake the encounter off and return to normal. Hanika's wor words swirl around in my head. Our situation has done a complete reverse from where we were just moments ago. I can't believe I was complaining about not knowing what to investigate. Oh, ow! Uh, anyway... That scream, what's that? The security guard? I doubt there's anyone else here. He might have seen something wherever he is too. It sounded like it came from far away, a ways down the hallway. That would be the other side of the school. Yeah, let's go look for him. But if he screamed like that... Something might have happened to him. Bum, bum, bum. Right as I respond, I hear someone whisper in my ear. Purify with red. Alright, the red stuff. I look in the direction of the voice. But all I see is darkness. Mister? No, it's nothing. Let's go. The boy in the mirror. Uh. Uh. Okay, okay. We climb up the stairs to the second floor. I feel something soft squish under my heel. I quickly pick up my food and shy my... Yeah! Snack! 
The hallway is covered with poisonous snakes. Moe lets out something close to her shriek upon seeing them. You snakes! We decide to go back to the landing. <laughs> oh, okay. I wonder why. Went down. <laughs> How does Bro know they're poisonous? Yeah, that's a good question. Oh, wait, we can go into a classroom. Oh, fuck, I went to... Go down here, and then it goes into a hallway. It seems to be locked, never mind. Bird cry creaks the si breaks the silent. I guess there's a crow or something outside. Okay, that's it. Is there a red light or something? Seems to be locked. Oh wow, an open room. Probably what a bunny went through. Oh, in the wall. Feel. I stick my arm in, but the hole gets narrower and further in that go. I can't reach what's inside. Oh my god, why would you do that? Stick the letter opener in the hole and scrape out the item that was stuck inside. Found a worn out talisman. When I pick up the worn out talisman, I feel warmth throw flow warmth flow through me. Wow, we got soul power. The more soul power you have, the easier it will be to survive a deadly choice. Oh, so if you fuck up the, the count just goes down. There are nonsensical scribbles on the blackboard. It's an abandoned desk. Feel. Plastic bottle. Well, it might come in handy. Welcome! Hmm. <laughs> Soy thank you for following. How are you? Search. Okay. Back. Uh, back. Keep pressing. I want to use like wasp arrow keys. I hear a noise like something slamming against the door. Someone inside? Let's go in. Oh, I shine a flashlight at the door. Out of nowhere, the door bursts open and something comes flying out. Yo, he's dying too. It's like a little girl. Boss battle. Moe shrieks and falls down. I recognize those clothes. Some kind of plant covers half of his face. <laughs> the part of his face you can see is twisted in anguish as she screams. No doubt about it, it's that guard. What the hell happened? <laughs> Thorns are eating my face! It hurts, what's going on? Uh... Moe sits on the floor, stunned into just syllables. <laughs> the guard suddenly rushes towards the entrance. And then, silence falls once more. Go back in! The only sound left is that of our shaky breathing. Can we go back in? Nope. Once we catch our breaths, I take Moa's hand and help them up. Our nerves have calmed down some, but that definitely left an unsettling impression. 
Something terrible lurks here. We can't just sit around. Nice hustle, tons of fun next time eat a salad. Huh? I felt like I was paralyzed. I'm glad we didn't bring that freaking kid in. We would have been traumatized. Or maybe would have been a smart ass, I don't know. Moe stares at the door. I wonder if Hanahiko did that. And I don't know if you noticed, but I got the feeling someone was standing behind him. There's really no good way to respond to that. I let silence serve as my answer. What else could I do? No point in coming here if we're just going to stand here shaking. If we don't uncover the secret before it comes for us. Why don't we check out the staff room? I tactfully avoid answering Moe's question. The guard had run out of here. Something might be inside, some secret about Hanahiko. Yeah, you're right. Let's just be careful, okay? I covered my wrist with my palm, making sure Moe doesn't notice. The moment I put my hand on the knob, the mark burned my skin, pulsing along with my beating heart. New info was added to the spirit file. Plantified guard. <laughs> the staff room is chaos. The furniture is appended and the walls are... Is there a fire or something? There are black scorch marks everywhere. Phew. Moe looks relieved as they come out from behind me. It's totally empty. Anyway, let's look around. There's a door. Looks like it goes to another room. The wall near the window is burnt. It must have been a fire here a long time ago. Let's go in. It's kind of cramped in here. Is this a storage room? Seems to be. Hopefully there's something useful in here. It looks like a secret... Oh. Okay. It's like the grudge kit. It's a massive wooden cabinet. Pill on the door, but it just rattles in place. Looks like it won't open. Something's stopping it. Okay, never mind, doesn't work. I think it's a school journal. The paper's deteriorated from H and bugs, I can't read it. There's a cut in the floor. Is this some kind of storage area? Tool, letter opener. Take out the letter opener, taking it out, but I can't. No, you cut it! The metal handle is retracted into the door. Try to get a grasp and pull out, pull it out, but it's an unsuccessful. Okay, so we have to find something, probably. The cardboard box, I think I can reach it. I grab the box and look inside. Got lipstick, a red pen, and girl slippers. Good job, mister. I knew there was a reason you were tall. Check inside, there isn't anything. Okay. Red pen with a cute character on the side. The cap is missing. Ink isn't dry yet, so it can still be used. Command put on slippers. I pull out the girl's slippers. Can't think of a way to use it. Okay. I'm leaving. Sniff the slippers. What's wrong with you guys?
There is a fire door. Okay. When I open the side door, all I find is a wall. I'm about to give up and close the door when I notice something stuck in the back of it. Found a worn out talisman! Yeah, boy! Ugh. Big points. The worn out talisman crumbles silently in my hand. Reach for my hand. I'll soar away. Until the dawn. Oh, I wish I could stay. Oh, it's the snakes again? Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe if you draw lip with draw on them with lipstick, they will leave us alone because they think it's funny. Okay, mm. There must be something that I'm missing. Uh, no, Corinne. It is not full time yet. No, no, no. No, Kogi! Oh my god. <sighs> yeah, so I have like on the left of me, I have like a can, a drink, and I have the mug here with the tea. And it was kind of blocking his way. Because he wanted to climb on the desk, so I was just like telling him, no. But uh, he just jumped over it. Jumped on the keyboard. I don't know, he's just silly. He's covering the camera. Hey, buddy. You want attention so bad? Seems to be locked. Door is locked. Tomb? Keyhole isn't rusted over yet. If I get a key, I could open it. Pen? He just wants to be close to his mom. It's so... Because he wants to be on the desk, but his... Like his... His entire scratching post with like a bed and stuff is right next to the desk. I put it there on purpose so that he could be close to me. But though, no, I guess it's not close enough. Drink something, okay, buddy? Don't knock it over. Because I know that you're very good at knocking stuff over, too. Okay, we gotta find a key.
Floor tiles have peeled off, leaving bare concrete. Car. Ah, that's what I saw. And it's an emergency alarm. I open it up and shine a flashlight to see if there's anything inside. A worn out talisman! You wow! More soul power! Have I been here? It's an abandoned desk. Turn the desk around and stick my hand inside. I doubt that's very useful. A what? Holy, uh, oh, hard head. Can be forced on an adult head with effort. Okay. Dust is so thick on the ceiling that just walking around causes a shower of particles. Hmm. Doesn't this one have a key? This is just the way back to the stairs, right? Yeah, what about this door? Oh. Oh. There was a ghost here, but my big fat head was covering it. Sorry. <laughs> Hard to see your reflection. Tool. Lipstick. Oh, the red stuff! It needed the red stuff. Try holding the lipstick up to the mirror. But nothing happens. Oh. What about the red pen? Can I combine stuff? Uh, is it red slippers? Maybe we can walk over the snakes with the slippers. Okay, nope. Nothing happens, okay. <laughs> no, but it just won't let me. It won't let me. What do? Closed. I already went in here, I think. Maybe I missed something.
Nope. After imposter. Red pen. Take out the red pen. What should I do with it? I don't know. Write on it. Plastic bottle. Put it in there. Didn't I touch it earlier and it like disintegrated? Turn over the turn flyer, but I don't find anything in particular. Nothing's there, huh? Looks like it. Oh, okay. Locked. Already interacted with that. Hmm, it's gonna say something about the dust again. Nonsensical scribbles. Broken window is letting... Oh. Kitty stretch. The rain is coming from the broken windows, making the floor cold and damp. Search to propose something falls down from top of it. Oh, what? A worn out oh, Another one! Okay. Corin is helping me search, although he's covering most of the screen, so he has to do all the work. Can you leave? Sit down or leave? Push him and he's actively pushing back. Like, no, I don't want to leave. <sighs> Why won't you listen to your mother? Tool. Cool. Ladder opener, no. Red pin? Probably won't do anything, it doesn't make any sense. There's a door here. Is that where I came from?
for me. Ow. Move. Thank you. <laughs> you decided to listen to me this time. Try to open it. Check inside. There isn't anything that catches my eye. There's also nothing here. It's just paper. He's, he's, he's way past the teenager face or age. He's a full grown adult cat. But he's very stubborn. <laughs> Are we welcome? Where do I go? Hmm. You can't use in here. You have used like everything, right? Well, but door big enough to fit an adult through it. Inventory jump scare. Looks like a sliding door has a simple lock. Oh! You have to look! Why didn't you just notice that the first time? The key itself seems to have gone missing. Something stuck in the hole for the screw. Seems that the wooden thing works as a lock. I'll have to do something about that to open the door. Use it now? Oh, now, now you want to use the fucking pen? Wow, you've got scales. Is it that surprising? Yes. Anyway, I need to focus. 
Suddenly, the resistance vanishes and the pen pokes all the way through. I put my hand on the door and slide it open without any issues. <laughs> There's a red tube inside. Got a flare. I see. A flare? What's that for? It's a signal light for emergencies. It's a good idea to always have one in your car. Huh, okay then. But... Moe picks up something off the floor. It's a thorn about as long as my pinky finger. That's what was in the hole. This is not a coincidence. I bet he didn't want anyone to have that, so he put the thorn in the hole. Is he scared of this? We both look at the flare again. Oh, that's the red stuff, maybe. What? Why did you turn off the light? That wasn't me. I didn't turn it off. It just went off. Uh-oh. What was that noise? Hey, mister, what was that noise? Be quiet. It's a struggle to not yell with my nerves on edge. I hit the flashlight again and again. Come on, please. The batteries were just working. I feel like I'm performing CPR on this thing. At the bottom, bunny. I got it! The door behind me warps threaten threateningly. My mark burns in pain. Death is already in the room next door. There's no time and nowhere to run. Calm down, I need to find a way out of this quickly. We are running out of time! A way to survive, we've got to hurry. The trap door, I guess. Do I look at it? It's a well-built door. Uh... The metal handle is retracted into the drawer. I tried to get a grasp and pull it out, but it's unsuccessful. It's no use. Hurry up. Uh-oh. The door behind me burst open as if propelled by some unseen force. At the same time, something soft wraps around me. The last thing I hear is Moe's voice. It almost sounds like... ...resignation. Then everything goes black. Oh. Where am I now? I'll have to go back to that room. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take a small break to feed my cat and then I'll be back. <laughs> B R B.
I have returned. Thank you. I also fed my Snorlax lunch before dinner time comes around and I forget. Okay, we're going back to the room. I don't know if I'm missing an item or something. Okay, now we go in here. Okay, wait. I'm gonna look at the... Look? It's a well-built door. Okay. Feel? Didn't I do this before? Like, I'm pretty sure I examined it and everything. But it didn't... didn't work! <laughs> uh. Something dangerous must be here. Okay, okay. I'll check it out later, okay. It probably only works once the ghost or whatever the thing that kills us appears. But we better make sure we're prepared if we're going down there. Okay. Uh. Look at the door. And then look. It looks really old. Pull on the door but it just rattles in place. Looks like it won't open. Now I look again? Looks like the sliding door. Okay. Yeah. I just had to double it in a certain order. I have to do something about that to open the door. Tool? Pen. Now I can probably pop open this too. Excuse me. It's a good idea to always have one in your car, okay? We both look at the flare again. That wasn't me. I didn't turn it off. I just went off. It's a struggle not to yell at my nerves and itch. Okay, we ha we've done this. Feels like I'm performing CPR on this thing, but finally! Okay. This... Tool ladder opener. Take out the ladder opener, shove it in! I might be able to get the handle out this- Ah, finally! When it touches the metal, my mark scorches me. But I have to do this. I grab the handle and lift up the trap door. As I thought, a dark hole leads down under the floor. Get in! I shove my way into the hole. <laughs> then I slide down into the darkness after them. Ugh. 
I fell unexpectedly far, hitting my head against something. Icy skeletons. I grit my teeth to stop myself from yelling. Something shoveling around above my head. If we had stayed here just a few more seconds. I grip my burning wrist with all my might. I must enjoy the pain for now. I can hear anxious panting. Moai must be right next to me. They're shaking so hard I can see it from the corner of my eye. I brace myself, expecting the trapdoor to break open any second. But the shuffling noise finally grows distant. Is it okay now? Yeah, I think it's gone. Suddenly my wrist isn't hurting anymore. Thank god, I thought we were done for this time. Anyway, where are we? What in the world is this room? I'm surprised this place exists beneath the school. Can you turn on the light? Yeah... I cautiously press the switch, but careful not to make any noise. Oh. Damn. A scene captured in the light of the flashlight sends shivers down my spine. What? Moe slaps a hand over their mouth. What a lovely garden! For a few moments, all we can do is stare in silence. A disturbing scene, more horrible than anything I've seen before, spreads out before us. Anyone will be shocked by it, especially a kid. I take a deep breath and look closer. There's something twisting around the corpses. It looks like some kind of plant vine. Are those... roses? The strangely sharp thorn and thin red petals. There appears to be real-life roses covering the corpses and carpeting the floor. My vision suddenly gr grows dim. What the fuck? Why is it like... <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why is it like sexy? <laughs> I see a woman trapped by roses. Whoa, whoa, what is this? I didn't know this would be this kind of... Ex I thought... I, same, I didn't expect that. <laughs> uh, the tragedy that happened in this room. It's as if it's all playing out in my head. I can see it. This game about to go private in your library! Yo, does this game have a not safe for work mode? I don't see it. Why are you checking? Out of curiosity, of course. Uh, wait. I click on, like, Community Hub, and this game contains content you have asked not to see. Nudity or sexual content. Okay. Click. It's probably spoilers. Okay. Roses, what are they doing here? Was that this girl? Did someone plan them? Moe's voice brings me back to reality. Y yeah I can't tell them that I saw was some walking dream. I scramble to remember the conversation.
The new rules are going to be brutal for those Chinese loot games like the Vampire Head and Seek One. Wait, what? Those would still be allowed, right? That's right, I saw the rose vines and then... Yeah, that's got to be it. It's not like they spring up on their own. Mm-hmm. But... Why would anyone do that? Did someone decorate the corpses for some kind of reason? Or did they die captured by the roses like I saw in that vision? Heek! Moe screams. What's wrong? Something moved. See, over over there, back in there. No, is something hiding in here? Hmm. I don't see it. There's a dried up corpse. Feel. I hesitantly searched the corpse, but I don't find anything. Mm hmm. Feel. Something flashes within the vine spy's feet. Got a round hand mirror. Looks like a gift for a young woman. A mirror? Oh, I see. I guess someone was here after all. I guess we're searching all the corpses. The mattress is oozing dark, dirty water. It smells like sewage. I slide the mattress over and find a plastic sheet underneath it. Got a vinyl sheet! It's pretty thick. Was it put there to protect from water damage? The top of the sheet is pitch black. At first glance, it looks like it's covered in mold. But when I spread it open, it crunches as dark red flakes fall from it. It's dried up blood? This is blood. I can't do anything but whisper. Dumbfounded, I, I stare at the bloodstained sheet. Something murmurs in my ear as if in, as if in reply. Their blood denies him. <laughs> oh my god! Part of me takes the voice seriously. I'm clearly hallucinating, but for some reason it calms me down. Still in a daze, I shine a flashlight under the bed. There it is again. Something's there. Moe's voice has gone very shrill. Then... Hey now, give me a break. I'm no monster, you know. I'm just a regular human being. Oh. Something slowly climbs out from under the bed. Why were you waiting in there? It's a man in a trench coat. A person? What were you doing under there? The man looks bored. He scoffs. Same as you. I ran into the monster and escaped down here. Then you guys came. The man turns his back to us and drugs his chin. Anyway, I was hiding over there. His answer is believable enough. But why is he at the school to begin with? His presence raises a lot of questions. The man tilts his head a bit and peers at me, then he snorts. It seems he's he's seen through me. You don't look like you believe me. Guess that's only natural. I haven't told you everything either. I could, but uh... The man looks around at his feet. We better get out of here first. We shouldn't chat at the crime scene. Oh, he's like a detective. I think you're right. Moa seems to feel the same way. Let's head back for now. You have somewhere else to go back to? Good. Then let's get going. The man puts his hand on the ladder. He pauses and turns to us. The name's Satoru Mashita. I'm an ex-detective. Forgot to mention that. The man named Mashita disappears up the ladder. 
We follow him back up to the first floor, but when we emerge, he's not there. Hey, take a look at this. Mashita's calling us from down the hallway. Okay. Was it like this when you guys came through? Moe pipes up, voice slightly wobbly. No, it wasn't. It wasn't like this at all. Something's creeping along the hallway. There are rose vines. Thought so. I didn't see them before either. The morgue's color grows more vivid. Early dawn. A few hours left until death closes in. Uh-oh! They do have excessive focus on intimate areas, do they not? <laughs> I mean, they make the characters hot, I guess. That's the kind of... Like, you know, some, some women just have big boobs. It just happens. Some people naturally put others on guard, even if there's no particular ill will between them. That's exactly the type of person Mashita is. Oh, you've got some nice stuff here. The moment he climbs in the car, he makes a grab for my bag. Then he starts inspecting all of my stuff. I wasn't planning on keeping a constant eye on him, but he's making it very hard not to. Moe seems like the type to stick her nose in everything, but... She's suspiciously silent, as if exhausted. Are you okay, Moe? Uh huh? Oh yeah, just zoning out. You know, I'm fine. She doesn't look fine, but... Uh, my other passenger is more of a concern right now. So, were you at the school because you were investigating something? I'm not in the forest anymore, just poking around for my own reasons. Something I wanted to check. I don't doubt what he says, but that would mean he entered the school illegally. What were you... Let me ask one thing first. Rashida interrupts my question and points to my arm. Does that hurt? It didn't take him long to spot the mark on my wrist. Sometimes it hurts the most whenever I'm in danger. Huh, is that so? Mashita leans back in his seat, satisfied. I was investigating some missing people. Guess he's responding to my question now. The school came up in a number of missing persons cases. Each one of them had some affiliation with H Elementary before they disappeared. Teachers, workers, people in the PCA, students and their family members. I would say you could very much argue for those kind of games that is not the focus. They just... They, like their description says, they just want attractive looking characters. Otherwise, Stella Blade or whatever would also be banned. Moe speaks up from the back seat. Were those people... their corpses down there? She doesn't sound as energetic as she usually does. Did something happen after all? I mean, we saw some shit back there. Is her mark? Mashita doesn't reply. Maybe he thinks the answer is obvious, or maybe he's replying to a kid isn't worth his time. But something bugs me about what he just said. If the school was clearly suspicious, then... Of course, I brought it to my superiors. All I got for it was... He continues before I can ask, making a slashing motion across his neck. You got fired, huh? Disciplinary discharge. Something about sexually harassing a subordinate. Huh? That principal's gotta have some kind of political pull. I probably dug up something he didn't want getting out. It wasn't my plan. I never meant to uncover anything dirty. True, the school did, did have that suspicious room. 
It's not that strange to think it will come up in some missing persons cases. Oh, what the fuck? That would be common sense at least. But common sense is for the world of the living. A spirit... ...might have something to do with those cases. There is an awkward silence. In that sense, this isn't even a case anymore, is it? Mashita sighs deeply. Who'd believe it? Who would believe that there is a monster in that school killing people? It's personal now. Our problem, and we're on our own. He turns his wrist over and shows it to me. On his skin is the familiar mark. You too? Yeah, I sensed it as soon as I saw yours. I had a feeling this would be a problem. We're in the same boat, you and I. He has good instincts. We should talk more when we get back. Akujo mentioned there's some... I stopped myself from finishing my sentence. I shouldn't mention that for now. In any case, once we get back, we'll give you more details. Yeah, I'm sure that'll help him a bunch. But Mashita scoffs. Help, huh? You're underestimating me. Uh, okay, you wanna do this alone then? Go die. When I get out of the car... Someone's there to greet me. Welcome back, mister. You too, Ms. Moe. I'm glad you're, un you're unarmed. Unharmed. <laughs> unarmed too. Did you find any clues about the spirit? What, so there are others? This is everyone. Huh? What a reliable group you've got. The sarcasm is practically dripping off his words. So, are you all planning on continuing the search for that key or whatever that is? We don't have anything else to go on. There's no other choice. I don't understand you. If the source of the mark is this spirit, it would be best to destroy the source, don't you think? What do you mean? The spirit exists. So all of you ha all you have to do is kill it. Are you serious? Of course he's serious. He doesn't exactly look like a joking type. Even if we manage to kill it, will that really make the mark disappear? When I consider everything Mary's told me, it doesn't seem like it'll work that way. Even assuming it did, we have a more fundamental problem. And how do you plan to kill it? I'll figure something out. If something exists, there's a logically a way to destroy it. There's logically a way to destroy it as well. He claims he can kill the spirit, yet he doesn't even know how he'll do it. Where does all that confidence come from? Don't forget, I faced him once already. If we're seriously thinking of killing him... Majita grasps his wrist. The little shit shot some kind of thorns at me from a distance. They hit hard enough to stick in concrete. There's no way to get close to him. We have to make that a priority. You have to get armor. Majita pulls something out of his heel of his shield and tosses it at me. It's a thorn curved like a fang. The only reason I'm still breathing is because I was lucky. I wa it won't happen next time. We need a plan. As we head to the entrance, I tell Masuta about Kuja Mansion. He takes it all in silently. Even bringing up the talking doll or Saya Kujo's death doesn't trigger a reaction. Is he so unnervingly calm because he's already dealt with the supernatural? We reach the main hall, which is warmly lit. This is a strange mansion, but for some reason, I feel like I've come home. Acclimatization is kind of terrifying. Welcome back, Lord of Iluris. That man is a mark bearer too, I see. Would you make the introductions? I update Mary on our investigation and the strange way we met Mashita. 
The mirror, the underground room full of corpses, the sudden appearance of roses. I really hate to admit it, but it's clear something unnatural is at work here. And the spirit that caused all of it. Hanahiko. There's no doubt that Hanahiko is the one who put the mark on Mashita's arm too. But... What kind of chance do we have against a monster that can do that? So would all those people also be mark bearers and I just felt... And I died down there? Mashita says we should kill him. But is that even possible? Hey! Of Alurus! <laughs> My train of thought is interrupted. Mashita's holding a leather-bound notebook out towards me. Read this. I picked it up in an underground room. It was caught up in a bunch of those rose vines when I found it. It was pretty hard to get loose. Did you read it? I skimmed through it a bit. It's got some interesting stuff. <laughs> That's what he says, but he's not smiling at all. His eyes simmer with a quiet anger. Dark red stain... Dark red mark stained the cover. I have a bad feeling, but I flipped through it. Rose petals fall as they become unstuck from the pages. <clears throat> the author was intelligent and well-written. Reading through, it dawns on me that this was written by H. Elementary's principal. The Ostia. Meticulous letters in each page tell a ghastly story. Records of young adopted boys' tutor tutoring sessions. The first note is from five years ago. It seems the boy adopted by the principal was, a sm was small and exceedingly cute. He enjoyed wearing skirts and makeup too. There was no denying that he... That they truly suited a dainty red-cheeked boy like him. But the principal had a hard time accepting such fancies. Oh, that's probably like where the lipstick and stuff comes from. Bad habits must be corrected young to promote sound mental health, he thought. So he called it tutoring as to cover for his warped desires. They took place in the underground room. Too many prying eyes anywhere else. There was no safer place than the school at night once all teachers had left. The principal stayed behind under the pretense of keeping watch. Then tutored. He was a highly respected teacher. He'd even made appearances on TV. There was no reason to be suspicious. The only one who noticed anything strange was the boy's homeroom teacher. But she feared the principal's power and firmly kept her mouth shut. Bitch! As the notes continue, there are more... ...and more deranged. They paint a horrible picture. It is of a totally dis distorted parent and child. My child gets weaker after every session. His delicate frame has grown thinner and his red cheeks have no are now darkened. His appearance is described in detail, but there's no malice or hatred. There's just fanatical sincerity, his pride as an educator, and a terrifying smothering love. Yo, what the heck did they do? It continues like that to the very last page. There is no mention of what became of the principal and the boy. But going by the current state of H Elementary, I can hazard a guess. You don't look so well, mister. What was in that notebook? Tsukasa peers up at me. He and the boy in the notebook are about the same age. This isn't stuff you share with a kid. I better just sum it up some of the main points for him. That's terrible. 
We children are always victims of the ego of adults. Stupid grown-ups are irredeemable. Oh, what the fuck? Why'd he say that makes sense? The revolting evil of adults and the poor boy who became a victim. But is that really the end? If Hanahiko and the boy in the notebook are connected... ...then the boy turned into a monster. Is that even possible? Ah, like the the principal's son is the is the monster. I assume it's like a it's like the grudge. It's like an evil spirit that wants revenge. Untimely deaths produce hatred. Death does not bring it to an end. Such festering sentiments can give birth to the supernatural. Yup. Ow. Monsters, ghosts, eventual spirits—they have many names. I believe that you are... you have all heard one or two so, such stories. Hanahiko is similar. Mary's words are hard to swallow. But after all those weird events, it is only... it only makes sense to accept them. If I turn my back to the truth, all that will await me is death. Then Hanahiko is really a monster. We must form a plan based on that hypothesis. Mary is silent a moment. Then her jade glass eye shifts to Mashita. Incidentally, according to Lord of Alura's report, there are those among you who are considering killing killing the spirit. I shall warn you just in case, but that will be very difficult to do. Why is that? I could see Mashita's narrow his eyes, but made sure to speak up first. They are from the world of the dead. Just as the living cannot become more alive, the dead cannot be killed. The only thing you could possibly destroy is the cursed sentiment. So, what does that mean? It is as I told you before. Death and life existing together. If that is the origin of the mark, then a way to erase it will be there. By driving away the spirit, the curse will also be eliminated. So defeating Hanahiko is how we'll be able to destroy the mark. Setting aside how he can be killed... What exactly is the key then? It is nothing more than a concept, so I am unsure, but... I am certain of one thing. Fate ties the spirit to its place of birth. An object there may be able to fulfill the role of the key. It is, difficult, it is a difficult concept to grasp, but that is just how spirits are. Determining the nature of the key... That will decide your fate. I had a feeling we'll just have to keep digging around at H Elementary. We don't know what the cursed sentiments or the key to destroying the grudge are. Gaining the key and lifting the grudge is the only way to survive. You will be required to be callous and make use of the spirit's fear. Adults? <laughs> The way to repel the spirit lies within its grudge. Remember this and be careful. Uh, probably... The detective then? Ah... <sighs> <sighs> I haven't saved the game once. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave it at that though. Visual novels are kind of hard to stream for a long time because it's so much reading. And it makes my mouth really, really dry. Mori's not there, no. You probably have to select the right one per chapter. So this Dry mouth having ads for real. Visual novels are really straining. <laughs> um, do I like it so far? Um, the plot is kind of generic, I must say. I do really like the artwork. Are we gonna get more artwork with the male playthrough? 
um, the stuff that we saw, like that quotation mark artwork, wasn't the girl that we hung out with. It was like there was it was like a, the, one of the skeletons that was there. He just got like a vision. <coughs> So, probably. The story in this kept me invested for the entirety of the riveting pressing A gameplay. <laughs> Showing the dead lady's ass is important to the plot. VNs are best streamed by... VAs? Wait, are you mean? Do you mean that I shouldn't stream them? <laughs> it's more like storytelling, right? It's like a sto It's just like reading a book, I'd say. Or you need to get multiple people to voice multiple characters. That wouldn't be a straining, I, I guess. Reading out loud for the class. I mean, even then. It would be pretty... It would be a lot of text. Reminds me of... Uh, I don't play... A, I don't play a lot of visual novels. Because the other one that I played was the Square Enix um, horror game. Which was that again. Paranormal site. Oh, yeah. I was more invested in that one. Yeah. But there was also... I feel that ma that ha was more of a game as well. Yeah, that one was really good. I highly recommend. I do wonder where this goes, though. Maybe the real death mark was the friends you made along the way. Girl in the shell is one of the always thing of a horror, although I generally can't remember if it was stream safe. Girl in the shell. Let me Google that. Kara no Shoujo. Well, I've seen. I've when I look it up, I, I see a, a thumbnail of a certain twin VTuber couple streaming it, so probably. Can I show you on Steam? Uh, well, it has naked characters. I don't know. Oh, it, it actually, it has sexual content. Straight up. You can probably turn it off if it's like a Saya no Uta. Song of Saya, was it? I'd say that that's one of the few visual novels that that fully kept me invested from start to end. I rem I remember reading through it in like one go. 
I, like, I stayed up to, to, to read how it went. It was a long time ago. I'd say despite that, I find it hard to... ...remember... ...what the story exactly went through. Babe, would you still love me if I was a Lovecraftian stinky slimy flesh monster? <laughs> No. Speaking of, there is like a, a Lovecraft sale going on? Or is it already over? Oh, there's still some sales. I should have a look at it. They have Darkest Dungeon 2 on sale. I've been looking at it for a while. But at the same time, I see people complaining that it's like... ...worse than the first one? To play the original Call of Cthulhu, I probably already have that in my library too. Yeah, it's like a it's just a totally different game. But I have never played the uh original even. So maybe I should just play that one. Or maybe the 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 fact that it's so different won't bother me if I have not played the first one. There seem to be some decent horror games on sale. I'm like looking through it real quick. There is a game called Angry Waifu. And it says that it's a Souls-like. Cut anime girls into pieces and steal their underwear to protect the old mansion. Crazy and ridiculous action RPG game for your pleasure and satisfaction. Okay. Um. What the fuck? <laughs> Why is this, this souls like as a tag? And there's also a big head mode. I scrolled out and it's like, not recommended. This game changed my life for the worse. I am now mentally ill and I like men. <laughs> it has three reviews. In total, they're all negative. <laughs> what the fuck? Maddening. Oh, there, well, there seems to be some good stuff in here. For a uh, stream. But not the waifu one. Tentacles of Submission. RPG, anime, action, Lovecraftian, souls like, JRPG, roguelike, action, RPG, survival. Great. <laughs> Quality. Lolita Expedition. <laughs> and Call of Cthulhu is there, all right. Oh, these are VR games. I can't play those.
Yo, they have a, this is they have Alone in the Dark DLC where you play as like the original Polygon model. <laughs> it looks so much better. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll look through this. Seems like there's some good stuff. <laughs> Case 03, true cannibal boy. This is like a... This looks like RPG maker. Par oh, there's multiple paranormal evil. Scorn, man. That game fucking sucked. <laughs> Which is unfortunate, because it looks cool. But holy shit, was it boring. I don't know how anyone thought it would be good after the showcase. Scorn, you mean? It's just... It looks cool, it plays like ass. Like, and that's what pulls a lot of people in, right? If it was a decent, like... It would have been better if it was just a walking sim instead of having those atrocious puzzles and forced in combat. A boring slug in the slug world. <laughs> Would have been better as a Doom map, true? <sighs> okay. I am gonna go for a walk with my cat. And then cook myself some dinner. And I'll be back tomorrow. Um, tomorrow I'm gonna have a, another collab for content warning. I'm gonna play with, um, I'm gonna play with Sylvie again. Uh, but that'll be a lot later. That'll be, uh, time-wise in like two hours. Two hours from now on. Uh, but I will stream something else before it. I don't know if it'll start later. I think I might start later so i can then move on to the collab but i will uh, let you guys know the the train simulator game that i have scheduled is like a prologue kind of game so it's short so if it's uh, too short i can just fill in the time i'm sure you can find something to do and you hang out uh i highly recommend this game also... It's... it's Put it on your wish list because the regular price is like $40, but it's very often on sale for like 5 So please uh, very much wait. I don't know if I will continue it on stream simply because it's a visual novel. I kind of hope that there will be more puzzle elements. But it really just is a VN. No hate. <laughs> I need to fix my sleep schedule too. And make sure my cat doesn't shit in a box. <laughs> or like the litter box. <laughs> Stop playing Pokemon all night. No, I just sleep very badly. It's been like a 
it's like warm and I swear my swear to god my cat just wakes me up all the time like I need to make sure that he sleeps at night by tiring him out don't give him enough attention Okay, let me find someone to read. The shitter box, not the Amazon box. Yo, I be having dry ass having lips, man. <laughs> uh, damn. I'm burping a lot today. <laughs> Thank you. What was in the tea? I don't know, it's just regular tea. Yeah. Huh. That's some really good base. <laughs> I'm all about that base, bit about that base. No travel. I'm all about that base. No, double. Okay, let me see who I can bother. Duck stream? You guys want ducks? <laughs> yeah, looks good. Feed the ducks with me. Okay, everybody, thank you guys so much for watching today. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you so much for all the subs. Gift subs. Thank you. I owe you guys my life. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. And I will see you all next time.